It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therese here. Mary Jo Foley's here. One week into the Windows 10 era. We know a lot more, plus good news about Xbox, Windows Phone. Lots to talk about. Stay here. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 425, recorded Wednesday, August 5th, 2015. Don't pull my bits. Windows Weekly is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 100-plus job sites, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. And by IT Pro TV. A good IT Pro is always learning, and IT Pro TV is the resource to keep your IT skills up to date with engaging and informative video tutorials for a free seven day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account. Go to itpro.tv slash WW. Use the code WW30 at checkout. It's time for Windows 10 Weekly, the show where we cover Windows 10 Weekly. I got a lot. <laughs> Windows 10, it feels like that. weekly. <laughs> uh, Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here from Therott.com and AllAboutMicrosoft.com, respectively. Uh, we are one week into the Windows 10 era. Yep. Got, got, I didn't realize last... The Windows 10 apocalypse. Last week's show <laughs> was two and a half hours, primarily because I was futzing around installing Windows. <laughs> and uh, it probably I would refer to it as the most epic episode ever. <laughs> I, I thought know. so. <laughs> but uh, a number of people said, you idiot, I installed it in half an hour. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, let me ask that guy a question. Were you recording a podcast? <laughs> I was doing a few <laughs> yeah. other things. And I screwed yeah. it up a few other times. And I should point out that, because uh, so well, the way I had done it was to download the ISO um, yep. and then just uh, install it right on top of my uh, Windows 8. It never <laughs> activated. As we saw during the show, there were devices. Oh, that, and so what has happened since? Oh, yeah, I can fill you in. Uh, and <laughs> there, there were devices it. that never uh, down. It just the thing that was a mess. Yep. So, and let me. Can I guess? Can I just guess? Can I yeah, guess? guess. Those things were all resolved. Nope. Well, I was impatient. <laughs> all right. By I'll Friday see you next week, everybody. By Friday, they were <laughs> yep. not resolved, and yep. so I rolled back to the original eight one that the, the Dell had come with. This is a late model this Dell is the XPS. XPS 13. Yeah, 2015 yep. version. So, but yep. I was able to roll back. Interestingly, I wasn't able to roll back through the. I don't like Windows 10. Let me go back. That it yep. said you can't. Too late. Which was wrong, obviously. Okay. Yeah. But I right. was so able to went. just through the normal recovery control panel. It said restore it to your original state, and I did. So since last week's show, I have a lot more information about that stuff. But please continue. Okay, good. <laughs> I did it and made sure first it was activated almost immediately. I got a full screen from Microsoft saying, "Wouldn't you like to go to Windows 10?" Hmm. And then yes. I did, and it was painless. I yeah. all the yeah. one of the I think there's I think I okay here's my theory because uh, on the ISO didn't have the Dell apps, it didn't have the drivers for the Dell. The one I downloaded when Microsoft pinged me. Had the Dell apps, the Dell updater, had the drivers, all the right drivers. It uh, it activated instantly. I think there, there's was, a there was an activation server issue last week. Oh, there way. was. And I okay. wonder if that. Yeah, oh, okay. I wonder if that was related to that. Yeah. Anyway, it's fine well, you know, now. Yep. Good. 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 So that's the way it should be. That, it, that's the way it should. Well, be. and I, it was because I, I was I impatient. My counsel to right, everybody say, is: don't be impatient. Just wait till Microsoft says We recorded says the it. show on when. Uh, Wednesday, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, that was the day it came out, and that day was a mess, yeah, and for the next couple of days, probably a mess, and so you know, it's maybe not surprising uh, that things have improved since then. Um, actually, you know, it's so I was away over the weekend, and uh, Mary Jo and I usually talk about a couple things here and there, um, and I never threw this by her, but I'm curious, Mary Jo, what you think about my theory now, um, which okay. I mentioned in a kind of a random spot in an article, so you may not have seen it, but um, there's been a lot of talk this year about 
um, for the lifetime of the device, you know, what that means. Yeah. Right. And uh, it occurs to me that what it means is when you agree to get Windows 10 for free as an upgrade to Windows 7 and 8.1, you upgrade your machine. The hardware ID of that machine registers up to the cloud, up to the Windows Store. And that machine from then on out is known good for Windows 10. It's always going to work. And so mm. someday down the road, if you reinstall Windows 10 from scratch, clean install, it, it will work. It will just activate. No yeah. worries. Yeah. It will always happen. Mm -hmm. and, and my theory about the lifetime of the device is that Microsoft used that language specifically because in this one case, when you get the free upgrade, not when you buy it you know, at retail or you know, electronically or whatever, that it is literally tied to the machine. Not so to that your you were account. To take this, not to you at all. In any way. In other words, you didn't get a free upgrade. The Windows 10, uh, your, did. your PC did. Right. So if yeah, you sell this computer to someone else or you yeah. give it away and they decide, well, you know, I'm going to blow this thing away and put Windows 10 on it and see what happens. It will always activate because that hardware ID for the machine is in the cloud. We, we should point yeah, out this is think Paul's theory. It is a theory. Um, but I think it's grounded in evidence, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, th there's some language in the EULA that contradicts this somewhat, but I, I believe that that language is really uh, for people who bought Windows 10, you know, that the right. contract that you enter into when you purchase Windows 10 is different than the contract that you ent in enter into, again, theory, uh, yeah. when you just get it for free. But that makes a lot uh, and, and of sense. That makes a lot does. of sense. Uh, I think so. I think so. Yeah, because otherwise the lifetime of the device is the five years of um, mainstream support, five years of extended support, right? That's that's yeah. if you buy Windows 10, I think. Right, right. But yeah. like you're saying, the, the lifetime of the device thing, they've never said like it's two years or it's four years. And I think your theory is right. Like if you keep your PC for 10 years and you keep Windows 10 on it, 10 years. And, and by the way, let's put it, let's look at it in a slightly different light. Let's say that you believe that you are the, per, the are the entity that is entitled to this Windows 10 upgrade for free for life, yeah. you know, for the lifetime or whatever. And so you install it on this PC and you use it for a couple of years and then you decide to give it away. And so you blow it back to Windows 8.1 or whatever and you sell it, give it away, whatever. And now you think, and now you say, well, I have this license somewhere that I am entitled to because I, I did this upgrade, you know, in the cloud, yeah. you know, I did this upgrade at some point in the past. Um... And maybe, you know, use an application to, st <clears throat> not steal, but, you know, grab the, the product key and right. you try to, up, you know, try to use it on a different computer. <clears throat> and, right. of course, it fails. And then you go to uh, Microsoft and you call them and you say, hey, this is what I did. And I don't know what happens then. I mean, I, I suppose yeah. they might or might not fall for that. But, I mean, that yeah. that is a, a, a sort of software licensing um, contract that really doesn't exist. I mean... <clears throat> you have very limited rights. Yeah. Uh, regardless of how you get Windows. And in this case, I would say you probably have even less. I mean, you're, you're really uh, signing on to some requirements. You know, you're going to update the machine. I, I, I believe that the that free update is, I think it's tied to the computer. Hmm. Yeah. I, I you mean, know, people, like people are asking, uh, what, if, what if you change out the motherboard? And I I saw there was a post somewhere um, on a Microsoft site where that explained in detail what happens if the, if you do that. And I right. believe so, you still call in or no? To yeah, call in? right. So uh, okay. my understanding is that would work just like it does today. So you bought Windows 8.1 or Windows 8.1 came with a new computer and your motherboard right. fries, whatever it is. Or you, you're just a, uh, an enthusiast and you decide to upgrade your motherboard. Um, the hardware ID that's generated from all of the components in the system to determine whether your product is genuine would have changed. Your system would not be activated. You could try to activate it electronically. It would probably fail. By the way, in some cases, it would, in fact, work after a certain amount of time. Uh, and then you have to do phone activation. And I'm sure there's, someone will ring in with an exception to this, by and large. Microsoft will always agree to that. You know, they, they'll make it happen. It will be fine. Be, the theory being that anyone who would bother to call in and actually talk to them, you know, is yeah. not, a, not a pirate. I mean, it's not very efficient to do that kind of thing. Um, I, <laughs> I, really. I see no reason. Right. Yeah. You know, I don't see any reason why that would be the case with Windows 10 yeah. as well. You know, because obviously the hardware ID changes. It's not exactly the same hash, I guess, as with mm -hmm. um, yep. retail versions of Windows, current versions of Windows, et cetera. But uh, same theory. You know, it's uh, based on certain hardware components, generates a, a unique number for your computer, stores it up in the cloud. Right. Um, I would imagine it's going to be the same thing. I think people are freaking out. 
I'm a little, you know, it's, 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 it's strange to me how many questions I get about this kind of topic. You know, you get this free version of Windows, you know, five days down the road, you blow out your motherboard, you want to use the same thing again. You know, they're saying, I'm right on a site that it's not the same computer anymore and I don't get Windows 10 for free anymore. And I'm thinking, you know, you got Windows 10 for free for like three years or whatever. I mean, what's the big deal? But, you know, I, 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 Microsoft is not known to be sticklers for this kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be fine. I, and I think we're worrying about nothing. I wish that, you know, uh, this is kind of a consistent re refrain throughout this whole process. I just wish my, Microsoft had somehow communicated all this. I, I do. And then I have to remind myself that, you know, thank God they don't because we have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I don't know if you feel like this, Paul, but I, I feel like we yeah. had an idea in our head before July 29th about how this rollout yes. was going to happen. Yes. yes. And it, yep. what happened was very different from what we all believed we had been told what was going to happen. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. And, and if I could yeah. take that a step further, I would say they knew that and did nothing to... Disabuse um, us of our notions. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I find that to be a little odd. Yeah. I wonder if they knew. Okay, because why would you say something basically that wasn't true? And we, we were just trying to tell people, hey, here's when you should expect to get the bits and how you should expect to get them. Microsoft told us this. I mean, maybe their plan changed. That's that's what I keep thinking. You know, like we didn't right know anybody but hand. insiders I, no, I, I, would get it day one, right? We didn't know that. Yeah, I just don't think... There's no single brain or entity over there, you know, managing everything, right? So, right, I, I, you know, we talk to certain kinds of people and they have certain kinds of answers and, you know, other people are yep. the real decision makers or are involved with the lawyers and they can or cannot say certain yep. things. And I, I think that, I just think these two halves of the brain never speak to each other. I don't know why I'm calling it a brain, <laughs> but whatever <laughs> who does, it is. Who does, uh, does Edel, Edelman, Edelman, who does... PR. Who does communications for Microsoft? Is well, it still at Wagner Edstrom? Is is not there anymore, right? No, no, no they're, they're actually still the primary. Wagner still does it. Yeah, Wagner. They have still many one. PR agencies, right? Yeah, that's, and that's Edelman does some legion. of it. And I mean, it yeah. feels like <laughs> I don't know. It's a little. It's a little tricky. Just, it's a little uh, <laughs> multi headed. It's a lot of moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and well, and you guys have it's to deal with it. It's a big company. I, I listen. I, I keep trying to tell people this. You know, when they see great evil in a company like Microsoft, you know, those bastards. They no. they're working together to you blah, blah. No, they're not working together. No. You know, there, there's no there's no concentrated effort across divisions to screw over Bob over here in Illinois or yeah. whatever. I mean, it just doesn't work like that. And um, it, it's uh, a lot. You know, Mary Jo's had this experience. I know. You know, you'll talk to someone from Microsoft. They're like, I really like reading your stuff because I find out about stuff that. Yeah, it's happening it's in my company that I just have no idea what's going good on. For, yeah. Good for you guys. Yeah. Uh, especially for a site like therot.com, uh, which yeah. focuses on how to, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, well, I mean, just on that topic, I mean, yeah. as I said last week how? before in the past, I mean, how? I really want to have answers for things where I can say to people, this will work. Bingo. If you do this, it will work. And, you know, software uh, should not be like magic where you have to, you know, it's a right. little different every time. Computers or maybe it's a, a deterministic uh, object. Yes. I mean, I like to have, I love having answers, you know. Yeah. And I don't like uncertainty and I don't like this works sometimes, but you never know. No. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I, you shouldn't have to contort yourself into a pretzel while you're doing a software right. upgrade to make sure it works properly. Um, and so this, you know, it can be difficult sometimes. I mean, I want to be able to tell people the right thing. So what is the right thing? What is the right this? thing? <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, yeah. necklace of garlic. Yes. <laughs> full moon, very important. It was a full moon this week, so that was yeah, great. Yeah, could have been it. Great. No, um, it depends on what you're trying to do. And so, for example, um, one, of the, one of the key things that came out of the past week is um, that there is this, and I wrote, unfortunately, this wasn't one article. It kind of plopped out over a couple of articles, but... Uh, the key to the success of Windows 10 on your PC, you know, getting that free upgrade and going forward, or not, you know, even if it's not free, whatever it is, you know, the, a non-free upgrade as well, is you upgrade your computer to Windows 10. And once you've done that, you can do whatever you want with it. You can clean install from scratch. You can boot that thing with the USB. It will always work. It will always work going forward. Um, there are people who, you know, will tell you you need to grab a product key off of it using, you know, Jelly Bean, Key Finder, whatever. You really don't. Um, if, as long as you've done that upgrade once, you can, you can reset it, which is just like a clean install. You can literally do a clean install, boot up for USB key. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, you roll back to 8.1, you can wait two years, and you can clean install Windows 10 then. It, it will always work. Um, 
and by always, I mean, like, I, I realize we're in the Twitter era, so I don't mean literally always, but, uh, you know, it will work. And um, <clears throat> that's nice to know. It would have been so easy for Microsoft to have communicated this a couple months ago. Um, because a lot of people leading up to Windows 10 were freaking out about this, you know, that the, th the theory was, well, I don't know, you know, if I, if I lose that upgrade, if, if it's more than a year since Windows 10 launched and all of a sudden something goes wrong with my computer and I have to reinstall from scratch, I'm not going to get the, I'm not going to get it back. I'll have to pay for it. And that's not true. Um, uh, it is a much simpler system than I think a lot of people understood because Microsoft didn't do a great job of communicating that. Um, and so... The, the, if you want to get this right, upgrade the first time. You know, for example, in your Dell XPS, um, that upgrade went south for whatever reason. But because, well, actually, you never, you never activated, though, did you? And so we don't know why that is. But most people, when you do an in-place upgrade, it activates immediately. There's no question. It doesn't, you know, there's no worries. It works every time. Once you get that, you can then go and clean install any way you choose to do so, whether you want to reset it, boot off the media, whatever. Um, that it's makes accessible. a lot of sense. And then also ties in with the window, the way Windows Genuine Advantage works, right? Because right? yes. that's also yes. trying to physically identify a machine, not you, but a mm -hmm. machine. Yeah. Um, and so they already yeah. have that mechanism in place. In fact, I bet yeah, the you nice, they the nice assumed we would just know that. Yeah. I think what they assumed is that people would just, you know... Just shut uh, up and do it, uh, what, we, what they oh, told yeah, them to go do. through the... Pro <laughs> and, and it's, a, it's a very... Stop trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't understand the audience because the people listening to the show are readers. Yeah. They're very particular. They pay attention. You know? Yeah. What they want to do is extract the pot product key, put it into a piece of paper, put it in a bank vault, right. lock it up, <laughs> right. and be able Can't to go. No, I'm serious. They, they, they really yeah, want to get the old way of doing things. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, my advice them, to well, people, not, uh, to, the, to, to norms, nor, the normies who listen yeah. to the radio show, because that's presumably... You know, that's reaching, that's 200 stations, reaching a million standard traditional users, yep. Yep. was don't be patient. Don't yep. do right. anything. <laughs> Just right. be patient. Right. When it's time for your computer to be upgraded, Microsoft will let you know, and you will do the process, and it will all work flawlessly, I mean, I, and you won't I, have to think about I, it. I would we add got. a couple of steps to this. I mean, I would say, and I, I would say this to anybody, really, I mean, just in case. Make a recovery drive so you can boot your computer. I, I said that too. No, no, I always say that. Uh -huh. Before you know, any time, yeah, when you're going to do brain surgery, you always want to back up your brain. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, I always tell them that, but that's that's kind of, you know, standard yeah. uh, bullet But the bullet idea point. being that, you know, Windows 10 has tools like you that didn't work for you. that Because uh, I was impatient. Yep. Sure. If, yeah. Had I uh, just said, okay, fine, I'm going to stay in 8.1 until you tell me it's okay. And clearly Microsoft was in cahoots with the OEM to make sure yes. that I got the OEM bits. And that's that what I should have waited for. No, that, that's, that is true. That's true. Yeah. Although, I, I, as we talked about last week, I, the XPS is already shipping with Windows 10, so I'm a little confused why that didn't happen immediately. But uh, Well, because yeah. I downloaded an ISO from Microsoft. So I downloaded a generic ISO. Now, probably, well, uh, eventually, you're right, it would have rectified yeah. itself because the Windows update yep. would have noticed and it would have given me the bits I need. But after two or three days of not activating and not having um, Dell's update tool and the, it looked like yeah, something had yeah. gone wrong so I yeah. anyway this worked fine and had I been patient I mm -hmm. would have probably had no problems it's the impatience what about that got uh, me Mary Jo you you also upgraded a your laptop which was I Windows 8.1 or Windows 8.1 7 8.1 yep. and your your computer is fine working still great. fine no problems. Okay. Yep. I just did a straight upgrade. You know, I, I didn't go back and then do a clean install after that. I just upgraded it. Boom. Yep. That was it. Yep. Right. Um, in place. So I, whatever it, apps you have. Right. Yeah, everything so worked. Right. All my drivers worked. All my apps worked. Um, I didn't have any issues. Yeah. And, and That's my other point, yeah. which is that Microsoft's not going to offer it to you if there are compatibility issues. So yeah. you should wait until exactly Microsoft right. gives you the thumbs up. Right. There is a reason. That's, and by the way, sorry. Yeah. Now, that's what they told us. Remember, they said, we're going to roll this out in waves. This was the original thing they told us. They said, the people whose machines, we have the greatest confidence in this just working, they're going to get it first. Then if we think there might be an iffy driver or, you know, your machine's not ready, your OEM hasn't got um, support for certain things yet, then you'll get it later, it, maybe multiple weeks later. Yeah, so don't freak us. out if you haven't, if, you know, this right. is the thing I'll say next Sunday. 
on the next Saturday on the radio show. Don't freak out <laughs> yeah. if you haven't got it. That's yeah. uh, that's a sign from the it's heavens. It's going to be a little while. Yeah. <laughs> you should wait. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. again, I think the people listening to your show, in particular, normal people, um, should wait because they want that right. they certain want experience and they want a simple. Yeah. I think for yeah, some people listen to the show. You know what? I want Our to know audience they're different. You can, you can do right. that. Yeah. Um, you can live some, with. I get. I got an email from somebody uh, yesterday who had de who was doing the public beta of OS 10 and wanted me mm -hmm. to support him. He said, "Who should I get? I, my my e my email's not working." And it's like, dude, right, right. <laughs> no <laughs> one's gonna support you. And certainly not me. <laughs> You're doing a beta. Yeah. This um, this last week has been horrible for me. I don't I don't know if Mary, Mary no, Jo, if I you can get only these imagine kinds of emails, but the email. Oh my God, I, I 100 plus emails a day, and they're and a lot of them are very precise. I have an Asus yeah. X3, Which means blah blah blah, with lengthy. this. Lengthy. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's yeah. it's hard. I I I, I want to help people, but some of these questions is kind of non-answerable. You know, I yeah. upgraded to Windows 10 and mail doesn't work. You know, like you said, on Microsoft. Yeah. Right. Why? I you know I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's hard. why are you calling me? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I you know, I, I, I do read every email. I, 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 this past week, you know, it's been tough. I'm traveling. Yeah. You know, we did the yeah. side trip and everything. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. hard. And I feel bad because uh, it's such, it's a, a week of uncertainty, I think, for a lot of people. Well, let's flatten uh, a few are, of them. Let's flatten. So should okay. we assume somebody in the chat room saying, well, what happens if I change my network card and my MAC address changes? Is that a new machine? Am I not going to be able to no. activate? No. Uh, but I wonder if they're using the hardware hash that uh, Windows Genuine Advantage uses, which means you could change a so uh, one thing, but a few things you might have a problem. What yeah, is that it's ID? it's not the same hash. It, it's uh, it's based on the motherboard uh, in the TP the, it's the, the TPM, TPM and or the lack of TPM. Right, and I think that I think that might be it. it yep. It's um, so your machine has some sort of unique ID somehow. Usually, it's, it's yes. burned into it in some way. Yep. Just and by the way, you're. I think you're isn't isn't the Windows serial number itself burnt into into the BIOS? Yeah. The BIOS, so it could even just yeah, be but that's, that. Th that's that's how they know that the system is genuine. You know, in other words, they can they they check these things against the database. It all clears. They go through it. It's it, you know it's good. Um, you know, it, it activating or it being allowed to uh, well, anyone can upgrade. There's no check during upgrade, but uh, being allowed to activate, of course, doesn't uh, ensure that it's going to be a quality experience, right? Because you could force right. the upgrade, right? Um, don't force no it. That's there. always the rule. If it don't or, fit, you know, don't no, force you, if you, it. If you're going to force it, know what you're doing and know how you can get back. Right. Yeah, do I the forced things it, you got to do, and I survived, but I had to roll yeah. back. You know. Yeah. What if What if you have a custom built PC? Carlos Hernandez is asking that. Then do you well, go the get thing. the ISO? I mean, or, or what? Oh, I see what you're saying. In other words, because right, 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 right. So, right. Um, I would, I mean, without actually knowing what the process is at Microsoft and where those types of machines fall into that matrix that they do have. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, if you're comfortable knowing that, you, if you're a system builder and you bought, you built this thing for yourself and you know exactly what those hardware components are, you can go to the manufacturer website, see what the drivers are. You know that Windows 7, Windows 8 drivers will work fine in Windows 10. If they have Windows 10 drivers, it's always preferable. But those other older drivers work fine. Um, I would assume that someone like that is fairly technical and that the right approach for them is what you were suggesting, which is yeah. uh, force the upgrade, as Leo's calling it or whatever, but just, you know, uh, download the ISO, choose upgrade, uh, go from there. If you get that thing activated, this is true on Windows 10 Mobile as well, it might not be a bad idea just, just to reset it if you're a power user with the understanding that you're blowing away all of your applications, your data, your settings, do a clean install um, because now it will always activate. Uh, and you'll have a better experience with a clean install. What about, um, yeah, what about your your advice for a clean install before was install it and then use the re recovery uh, control panel to wipe yep. data settings and yep. that's a clean install. Is that still? Yeah, what I was told by, and this is from a system builder who went to a kind of a, like a camp that Microsoft had explaining how this stuff works. Because uh, think about it this way, if you're, if you're Dell, which is a big company, or you're just a, a, a small white box PC builder who also does, you know, PC, you know, fixes PCs for people. Someone will come in with your computer and say, hey, this thing doesn't work, and you can run diagnostics on it. You realize, I have to replace the motherboard, right? So when they do that for you, and this is true whether it's Dell or a small system builder, they have the capability to push through product activation so that it always works. And so, for example... They, they'll be able to tell that you were product activated for Windows 10 and they can get the new one activated for Windows 10 for you. Uh, and they'll push everything on your system will just work as it did before. But now what you've registered with the Windows Store is a new hardware ID. 
because the motherboard has changed. Um, so those things are possible, you know, and have been actually for some time. Um, so that stuff can all happen. And I'm not sure actually what the original question was. <laughs> like, what um, no, how to do a clean install, basically, is the... Yeah. Oh, clean install. Yeah, no, that's still true. I mean, once the OS activates, you are then free to do a clean install. And like I said earlier... It, including wiping the drive, oh, sorry, get downloading an yes. ISO, and reinstalling, and right. it should activate because so, it says, oh, I know you. You've used this machine with Windows 10 before. Yeah. To, to me, the pro the reset process really hasn't changed all that much between Windows 8 and Windows 10. Uh, the UI has changed a little bit. They brought PC refresh and pre PC reset into a single UI, which I think is an, an excellent idea. But it doesn't seem like it's changed to me. But according to this guy who uh, chooses to remain nameless, um, under the underlying uh, bit of what it does is different. And that it is, in fact, very, very close to a clean install, much more so than it was in Windows 8 by design. Ah. The theory, because of this process we've been talking about where to get that system uh, you know, registered with Windows Store, you have to activate it one time on an, on a, uh, a, I'm sorry, on an upgrade. Um, that once you do that, then you'll be able to um, do a clean install. So but re re that, reset this PC. And so if you look at, it'll give you two options. Well, three in this case, because you probably have a third. Keep my files, um, uh, remove everything. Restore factory settings. Yeah, oh, that's, that's probably an OEM oh. thing is restore factory settings. Yeah, look at that. Well, that might also be because you've got the Windows old um, folder Still on, on there, so, right? Yeah. That yeah, will so disappear keep my files, eventually. Yep. Keep my files as refresh, right? Okay. What used to be called refresh. Right. And remove everything as reset. Oh, crap. And if you were to choose reset... <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> don't, don't worry. Do <laughs> be a front. Um, but if you were to choose reset, you would get different options for whether you want to uh, blow away the drive, which is something you might want to do if you were selling it or giving it right. away because that information would still be written right. on the disk. That's remove everything. Yeah, that's and, reset. And, what used yeah. to be called reset. Yeah. yeah. No, no, so, no, you'll, you'll I know, I know, reference. I know. I just don't like it. It's making me nervous. <laughs> making me nervous. Don't click the button. <laughs> Actually, now uh, that Microsoft has tied it to an account, your account, and uh, that well, I have a... But it hasn't. Well, I know you don't have to, but I did obviously use my, yeah, my Microsoft account, and I, it's my uh, my subscription to Office. Mm -hmm. Restoring it is actually not such a big deal. If I were to wipe everything, yeah. it's not such a big deal. I got one drive. I got you know. I ha the only thing I don't install from the web these days is Photoshop, and actually that's just unique to me because Photoshop does install from yeah, the web. Yeah, if you these use days. Creative Cloud, I just, uh, it's easy. Right, but I use I still use Elements, so I mean, I, right. I, it's really just a downloadable installer, right. but. Um, We're you know, moving in that tools. direction for sure. It's really kind of neat. Um, yeah. <laughs> and those tools like Nine Night and other tools like that that are kind of really useful for grabbing Love stuff Nine off Night. the web are going to yeah. be more useful going forward because it's yeah. basically everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like your Windows 10 tip. Upgrade now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you did. Based yep. on Leo that's LeBron's success, I decided to write this <laughs> right now. Um, well, but again, you know what you're doing. Yes. Right. And, you, and you, you know, whatever, there's going to be one driver that doesn't work or I have to go back to Windows 7 drivers for a couple of things. Uh, you know, if you can handle that and don't care, and, and frankly, you shouldn't if you're technical enough. Um, yeah, go for it. BC and, and, confirms, again, by the way, BC confirms that he did upgrade Windows 7 to Windows 10, booted the ISO and was able to do a clean install and activated and everything's fine. So yeah, I, I think, don't actually need him to confirm that. I but think we I, know that I, now. I mean, it, yeah. No, well, <laughs> yeah, that's good. So I'm, I'm actually very, this is one of those things, like, again, a week ago, uh, maybe 10 days ago, not clear. Right. Today, that's what I think we know. Yeah. yeah. Now, Eliz asks a good question, which is, do we really need to do a clean install? No, right? Uh, I didn't. This no. new process really means up, upgrading in place is probably okay, right? Yeah. No, and, and that, that's something we sort of talked about in theory a few weeks ago, yeah. right? Remember that right. in the past, uh, the PC makers used to support this, and they used to have to charge for it, and there was always a lot of support involved. And, you know, the theory with Windows 10 was that this process had improved such that Microsoft was doing it and was taking on the onus of the support and the cost of that support. They must feel pretty good about it, right? I mean, yeah. um, they're handing this thing out to the world. I mean, literally to millions and millions of people, Um and so I, I, I guess just based on that evidence alone, regardless of what's happened in the past week, I would say, you know, Windows 10 it offers the best and most reliable upgrade experience of any version of Windows. I mean, yeah. There's no doubt about it. 
Uh, it's not flaw you know, it's not flawless, but um, it's pretty darn good. Way, I have to say, yeah, yeah, way better. But when you have a hundred million or a billion people <laughs> installing it, you're going to have even if it's a you know one tenth of one percent, that's still many, many, many thousands of people yes. with problems. So yeah. nothing's perfect. No. Right. And yeah. by the way, I've heard from every single person that had a problem. <laughs> you have. I think you, you, you're getting way more mail on this than I am. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, what? one of the things we didn't know last week when we did the show was part, everybody was, who was saying they were having activation issues, they're like, oh, I, I'm downloading it. I can't get it to activate. Microsoft told a couple of people I talked to that the activation server was actually not able to keep was, up with how quickly people were that's downloading. What, that's what was happening to me. And yeah. so... They were saying, like, come back tomorrow right. or give it two days and, and then it'll activate right. and everything will work. And that's what we said last week. Just yeah. be patient. Yeah. Let it go. And, right. and I just, just got impatient after Friday. I got a little... But right. you have 30 days. It's not like... You do. Yep. There's a clock. No, I mean, technically, you have forever. Well, as what happens after the... 30 days? If you haven't activated, isn't it going to shut down, uh, you know, start to shut its pieces oh, down? Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, right. I think so you'll we, just I get the activated. nag. The nag yeah, messages. You get the nag screen, but it will still work. Oh. I mean, you really yeah, don't yeah. have, a, there's no effective time frame on this. I mean, obviously, if you intend to use this thing every day, you're going to want to get it activated yeah. and working yeah. and all that stuff. But uh, as long as you've made the, the recovery disk and you've got your backup and, uh, mm -hmm. and and hopefully you can just go out right off the hard drive like you're seeing in, in your PC reset there. Mm -hmm. uh, Worked great. You should be able to recover. Yep. All right. Uh, one more thing and then we're going to move on because... Um, <laughs> I think everybody <laughs> should feel better now. We're all upgrading. Um, yeah. yeah. Is this about a RAID setup and backup? Is it, is <laughs> no. it one of those complex <laughs> no. No. Uh, But the service release one. Okay. This is <laughs> yeah. threshold two. Is that what this is? No. <laughs> <laughs> so right before Windows Weekly just started, Microsoft rolled out a cumulative update for Windows 10. They started oh. rolling it out. Um, some people have been calling this... Um, service release one when they've said hey there's com something coming this week it's called service release one what it's a bunch of non-security fixes stability improvements oh. performance improvements um, and it's going to everybody not just insiders everybody who has windows 10 is getting it uh, we don't know if this is service release one i've never heard of anything called service release one myself but it is a cumulative update. It is available today it's coming to you over windows update so this may or may not be this mysterious Service release. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Cumulative I, uh, update for yeah, Windows 10. Yeah, there it's it is. about 318 megabytes. Yeah. Uh, so it's not, it's not, you know, it's not replacing it's, Windows 10. No. 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 It's not, now, I, I jokingly called it Windows 10.1. I did decide no. <laughs> under advanced options, you can, because I was an insider, I decided to get the uh, fast ring insider builds. Why not, right? Or yeah. should I not? So actually, I had that tip. Uh, sometime in the past couple of days. I mean, uh, I you know, during the pre-release period between October and last week, uh, 5 million people were installing Windows 10 pre-release versions on their PCs and testing it and providing feedback, and that's really great. Um, I think for technical people, like people listen to the show, if you haven't joined the Windows Insider program already, um, I do actually do think you should do so. It will give you early access to new features and to fixes. And it will provide you with the opportunity to provide feedback and to shape Windows moving forward. And why wouldn't you want to be part of that? Um, obviously, for normal people, you don't necessarily want to jump in with two feet like that. But I think the ability to um, really help determine how Windows evolves over time is kind of a cool thing. And you can do it explicitly when you run a Windows feedback app and you say, I have this problem or whatever. You can go in and see what other people have seen. Or you can just wait for Microsoft to pop up a little help dialogues which they'll do so you'll you'll do something for the first time or you'll run something and it will say hey how did that go and you can rate some from one to five and that could be it you could write a little note if you want to and it just gives them you know feedback and i i, I to me that's like a virtuous kind of circle thing like i think we should we should do that we should all help each other you know i think that's yeah. kind of a cool thing uh, for technical people to do this cumulative up yeah, so i'm doing it because and i'm gonna get in the fast yeah. because i'm uh, yeah. living dangerously this cumulative <laughs> update uh, looks like it installed without a restart, which tells me it's not a. <laughs> it's not like. Crazy. Oh, so it's by the way, it is. It's supposed to restart. Oh, it is. All right, maybe so, it's maybe it's. Yeah, gonna... no, your computer's doing. Mm. Your computer's doing great. So. <laughs> 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 I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I'll restart. It it, you know what? I'll restart and it'll say, "Oh, good. Let me install the rest of this." Actually, I'm curious when you re right. Let's see if during the boot process, if it installs something. Right. I'm sure it will. 
uh, at that time. But right now, it's uh, it, it says it. The, the other thing is, if if you've been keeping up with updates, it's possible you have a lot of that stuff right. already. I, I think right. some of the Windows Insiders who have been installing updates over the past, I don't know, two or three weeks or whatever it is since the RTM that shall never be called RTM, uh, probably got some of those updates already. And so I think part of the deal is this thing looks at what's on your system and it, it does a delta download of only the stuff that you actually need. Yeah. So it could be smaller for something. Maybe that's it, because it was very quick. I mean, it, it, it thinks it's yeah. done. So maybe I had yeah, to this computer was actually, it was pretty slow. Yeah, so maybe there was something else going on. Um, all right, let's take a break. And uh, there's lots more to talk about, obviously. Uh, especially, and we did a whole show on it yesterday, the privacy uh, settings and issues and so forth. And I've been waiting to hear what you guys have to say about that. So. Is, there, is there like a laughing clown soundtrack you could have going? <laughs> yeah, well, sure. <laughs> laughing Sal will make an appearance on this next segment. <laughs> but first, let's talk about a way that you can hire fast. If you're in the part of the business where your job is to uh, hire, you know that that can awesome, awful, often be challenging. On the other hand, I think the Internet's made this a lot easier. You probably use job boards and so forth. And you know, part of the task is, well, which job board is the right one for the kind of uh, position we're filling and the kind of applicants we want to get? Can I make a rec recommendation? Something we've used we really like called ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter.com. First of all, ZipRecruiter um, will let, post to 100-plus job boards totally for you automatically with one click so you don't have to you know you don't have to guess just you know all of them including social networks like twitter and facebook and craigslist and all of that stuff and by the way this might be just a little hint a good time to do this since everybody's on vacation the best candidates might be easier pickings you're not competing against a lot of other uh, companies for them uh one other thing that i love is they have on you know they of course reach out to candidates as well so they have on file, more than 4 million current resumes. So you may get instant hits, like you push a button and it goes, yeah, here's 48 people, be perfect for that job. Now you may say, well, I don't want to get a million phone calls or emails. You don't have to. Zip Recruiter's interface fields the phone calls, fields the emails, puts the candidates in a, uh, in a screen that you can quickly screen them, eliminate ones you don't want to know about, rate them, and hire them. This could, you could be done this afternoon. It's really remarkable. ZipRecruiter has been used by over 400,000 businesses, including mine. You can try it for free right now. We got an uh, email from Tara. I love, I love uh, when we get emails about our sponsors. Tara uh, emailed and said, ZipRecruiter has completely changed the way we evaluate and manage candidates. As a small business, we subscribe to the always be hiring approach to growth. That's, that's actually a really good idea, I think. Um, and the tools available to us through our membership, you don't want to do it when it's like an emergency. The tools available to us through our membership have made that simpler, easier, and faster. ZipRecruiter is great. And I want you to try it free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. They'll know you heard about it on Windows Weekly. It's a nice way to, to kind of cast a vote for the show. ZipRecruiter.com slash Windows. And we thank ZipRecruiter so much for their support of Windows Weekly. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. Paul's shining laser in my eyes while I do the ad, trying to distract me. But no, <laughs> he has failed. <laughs> I was able to successfully... I'll bring you, you down yet, look for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we spent literally, I mean, an hour... Uh, one by one on Security Now yesterday, and if you want to do this, you yep. can go through the show, going through the settings, talking about what we know, what we don't know. But now that's through the filter of Steve Gibson, who is a privacy you know, advocate and a security advocate. Yep. And his conclusion, by the way, is I'm never going to run Windows 10. Um, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I said, of course, I love Windows 10. And I, you know, so what? But I think one of the things he didn't like is that Microsoft is now, you know, despite all their scrugled campaign, firmly in the camp of uniquely identifying I, okay. its users I, and so forth. I've read this on uh, the Wall Street Journal, I think it was, and uh, I just, I think this is Mary Jo's thing, but I just want to throw in one thing really quick, which was uh, something that really graded me in the Wall Street Journal article, which was about Cortana and how it was this, uh, you know, kind of data sucking, you know, um, you know, whatever. Uh, Cortana's off by default, by the way. <laughs> so, oh, really? You have to. Now, well, yeah, one of the issues just, is if you take yeah. express settings, which everybody's going to do, I did. Yeah. 
A yeah. lot of that stuff's on. I didn't have to expressly turn on Cortana. It was on once Except I used Express settings. Cortana doesn't do anything until you run it the first time. Then right. you have then, to step through no, you're right. things. You're right. You're so, absolutely right. I, I just I, I I don't quite I, I, I think we're we're kind of on a borderline hysteria thing where there's you know, the, the Windows ten free upgrade thing is too good to be true. There's gotta be a there's gotta be a gotcha. You know, the 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 required updates, that was okay, that you know, it's not quite dirty enough, but you know, because it's sort of understandable why they would do that. That Microsoft might be stealing your personal data in the background justifies the cost, you know, the <laughs> you know, the free upgrade cost no, or whatever. No, it's no, like no, guys, no, no. I, I don't know. So anyway, I'll I'll back off, but I I I find this stuff to be you know, hysteria. Baloney. Oh, absolutely. That's... And and even worse, link bait. Yeah, um, yes. Uh, you know, some of these, and for instance, Boy Gina's report uh, and a couple of others excerpted the EULA and really yeah. I took it out of context. And it, right. by the way, sure. I fell for it on Saturday. I was reading this and I went, oh my God. And then I read the EULA. The problem is the EULA is 12,000 words. Then I read the <laughs> EULA and realized that that excerpt was referring to cloud-based services. Not sure. I read it initially that oh Microsoft can actually look into my hard drive, my oh, private just, folders. You know, but that was like private you, folders in you one. You created drive. a document in Windows 10 and now it belongs to Microsoft. Right. You you downloaded a picture of your child, <laughs> no. you know, from a camera to your computer, and now Microsoft owns your child. In fact, <laughs> I, I went yesterday. I, did, uh, I will go a step further and say thank you, Microsoft, for explicitly saying this is what yeah. you know. If you use the net, it, what it's really saying is if you use cloud-based services. Right. In order to provide you with cloud-based services, we have to do these things. We will know yes. these things. And by yeah. the way, if law enforcement uh, approaches us appropriately, we will have to disclose these exactly. things. Which, which the by law, the way, right. <laughs> freaks, it freaks me out that anyone with a brain in their head would point to that and say, that's what's wrong with Windows 10. That yeah. you would uphold the law and, you know, and, and follow the law. I, I don't understand that. Yeah. But, by the way, so, I'm not receiving video from you folks yeah. right now. Yeah, we said we turn it off because your uh, signal's bad. We're trying to we're eking okay. little okay. bits of bandwidth out. Go ahead, Mary. Got gotcha. you. Oh. Gotcha. Okay, so I, I would say the first thing I'll say is, I think the best story I've read on this is on Ars Technica. Um, is that it Dan, says Windows, Dan Gooden's story? It's um Sebastian Anthony's okay, story. It says Windows 10 doesn't offer much privacy by default. Here's how to fix it. Yes. So. The truth is, if you just accept all the settings as they come in, you know, don't customize your settings, Microsoft is going to enable everything, right? They're going to collect data to make Cortana more accurate. They're going to um, track your advertising well, in ID. In other words, they're, they're going to enable data to make Cortana more evil or to make Cortana mm -hmm. work better for you. It just kind of depends work on better. your point you know, of view. Well, exactly. that's more exactly. a point of view d distinction I don't know than if it's a point of view thing. I don't know if it's a point of view thing. You know, it, what it says in the Cortana settings, for example, is Cortana can give you suggestions, ideas, reminders, alerts, and more. The way Cortana does that is you have to give Cortana access to your data. Otherwise, it doesn't know when your next meeting is or how right. far something is. That's how it works. That's how all of it Right. You works. choose. Right. Do you want that? If you do, you have to turn that on. If you don't want that, don't turn it on. Turn it off. You can set by, it. By you the way, the any, anyone who's used uh, an Android device or an Apple device with Android uh, with Google software on it has experienced the creepiness that is Google, where um, yeah. you do you know you're going about your day, or whatever, and all of a sudden the thing flashes and says, "Hey, um, you know, there's some traffic, and you're going somewhere later today. You might want to get going now." And you, yeah. you and you probably have that kind of weird moment where you're like, "Okay, this is incredibly useful." What the hell? <laughs> you know, Wait, like how did it's it a know little that? creepy and invasive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a little creepy. You know, yeah. Microsoft is not that company. Um, <laughs> and they're usually very explicit about, you know, but that's what they what, do with your data when change. they need it. I think Microsoft is now uh, essentially, I mean, look, you have an advertising ID. That's new. Yeah. Which you can shut off too. Yeah. You know? um, and if you shut it off, as not, they point off, you're going to lose some functionality. In yeah, fact, that's not you, new, but, you can no. use Windows 10 without using your Microsoft account. Right. Yep. But right. you have to jump through yes. some hoops to do so, and you'll lose a lot of functionality. Less, less, hoop, less hoops than in Windows 8, and you lose less functionality okay. than you did in Windows 8. Okay. Yeah. For example, I think I, think I, think I use this example. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think what I think is, well, besides the clickbait aspect of all this, that people are getting tons of clicks off of this, I think sure. what Microsoft is doing now is they're, they're setting everything to 
allow them to collect the most information because they think it's going to give you a more customized experience. Most right? people will want that, frankly. Right. I think. The advertising ID thing is, hey, we're going to serve you ads in some things, which you already know because we give you a lot of stuff for free and ads are the way we support that, right? But you can just get any generic ad if you want, or do you want to get ads that are more likely in your area of interest? If you don't want that, hit hit off. Right. I don't, the I don't advertising want you to ID did not debut in Windows 10, by the way. It didn't. It didn't. That was was that an 8? No. Yeah, okay. Uh, yep. All right. So... That's so what's going on. So in a way, on. they're being more forthright. Um, and I think that's they're what being scares more right? Because they're reading right. this for the first pl time, and it's yeah. like, what? Yep. Yep. But this, I should, right. you know, and Microsoft kind of maybe maybe got themselves into this with Gmail Man and Scroogled and all of that stuff. Uh, and by the way, Mark well, Penn, you mean who got created themselves that. into something awesome, and we're being right about everything. Is that what you mean? <laughs> well, but Paul, you can't say it's creepy when Google does it, and it's great when Microsoft does it. It's the same thing. I can literally say that. Later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I, and I think Microsoft, by for a long time campaigning against Google, saying they they read your email mm -hmm. and stuff, put themselves kind of in an awkward position. Mark Penn's gone, obviously. Oh. <laughs> so okay, but I mean, not to dredge up this whole topic, but I mean, Microsoft was reading email to protect you against spam. Google was reading email to serve you ads. Well, it sounds like you Microsoft know, is now doing the same as. Google, yes. Right. They're reading they're reading stuff to serve you up ads yeah. for sure. So yeah. so Gmail man is now Hotmail man. <laughs> or Outlook. You know man, what? Right? I think I think the all these vendors realize most people these days don't, don't really care, care about their privacy. They, well, it's not even <laughs> about privacy. They understand it. that some right. automated system that's yep. reading the email to make targeted exactly. ads is not an invasion of privacy. And again, the part that bugs me the most yeah, about this is right. you can go turn all of these off. Yes. If and you don't want nice. this, go turn at, it off. At the, at the cost of some services, in some cases. Yep. And by the way, I, I don't believe you can turn it off in Gmail. Um, no, you you, the, the way you turn it off in so. Gmail is not using Gmail, obviously. Right. G okay. You know, an, another thing I'm, I'm seeing people react to is they say, Microsoft's asking me for credit cards and collecting my credit card information. Well, if you're going to buy <laughs> things in the store... <laughs> Right. <laughs> what, what do you mean Walmart needs my credit card? <laughs> if you're going to you, buy Walmart. something in the store, you, you have to have a well, credit card okay. if it's a paid app. An intelligent that's person fine. knows that. And let's not set up straw man here. I mean, there no, are I, some I'm, legitimate I'm saying, concerns. That's not yeah, a legitimate concern. Well, some people are flipping out about that. But that's, yep. come on, guys. I, no, one I, of the I, recommendations I make in my book is to set that stuff up before you install Windows 10 so you don't get prompted. I mean, yes, and I, yes. Did, it, up your I did it back when I got Windows Phone. You said, yep. make sure you connect everything in so that <laughs> it'll make get it, it easier. Uh, yep. I love that. I'm not complaining about yeah. that. Uh, I know. It, everybody has their threshold of, right. no, no pun intended, of... Um, of whatever you can tolerate privacy wise and what you think is okay. And I just, I would say if you are worried, go in the settings and look at every setting that you can turn on or off and turn off the ones that flip you out. Yeah. I, the fact that you can turn these things off and flip switches is what makes Windows yep. great. And I have and said, that it tells you what they are. I said the same thing about Google, which is that Google got, uh, you know, when Google unified all accounts and, and published those, uh, uh, information, it scared people in the same way Microsoft's scaring people now. But you've got to praise both Microsoft and Google for being forthright and saying, here's what we're collecting, here's how we use it, and in the case of Microsoft, because it's an operating system, here's how you turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. Google's a service, you don't need to use the Google service, but if you're going to use an operating system, then you need to know. Yeah. Now, I mean, I guess if you use a Chromebook, you have to use it. I'm, 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 uh, I'd love, I would love to talk to Steve Gibson about this topic. I'm really curious that he <laughs> has come to the conclusion that he cannot run Windows 10. Well, understand. I know he is, uh, you know, I know he's, he's, he's a wooden shack in the woods guy, but. He's the Unabomber, basically. That's, but yeah, no, without no, the bombs. It. Yeah. But, ba but here's, the, here's what I said up front. And I said, Steve, let me ask you this. Would you prefer right. an operating system that was a command line only? And he said, yes, of course. <laughs> so, so, okay. There so, you go. okay. So, um, right. he's not exactly a modern, I want a modern operating system guy. He wants an operating system that doesn't uh, connect the dots. He wants, you know, he doesn't like JavaScript. Yep. He doesn't want to use JavaScript. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's killing him that he has to, yeah. uh, to or surf the modern surf net. But that's a, and that's a, by the way, completely legitimate point of view. And I yep. commend Microsoft for giving you the choice. Steve feels that's yeah. not sufficient. 
but he yeah. he says he's still using XP. He says yeah, I'm well. I'm going to be moving to Windows Seven soon, and I'm not going to ten. <laughs> <laughs> Windows okay, XP so has finally reached the level of security he's comfortable with. I, I honor that point of view. I disagree with it for most people because you hit the nail on the it's head. Not, it's, yeah. not it's not security right. It's not sustainable. Older. It's not, yeah. it's not right. um, mainstream advice. Yeah. You know? And and uh, and I also uh, well but remember that many of the people who listen to our network are not mainstream. That's one of the reasons this network exists. We're aimed at a, yeah. uh, a highly sophisticated technology enthusiast. And kind that of the cosplay crowd. Yeah, the cosplay crowd. So, <laughs> <laughs> although I have to admit that that uh, bell dress from uh, the Disney that was the Taco Bell dress that was pretty nice. Yes, uh, that's that that's good. my kind of listener. Um, yeah. So, Taco. Yeah. I guess he, you know, we should get Steve on because I guess his and he's probably listening. His position is even if you flip all of those switches. It's still intrusive, and I'm not sure what exactly is in, he feels is intrusive. So does he think every modern operating system is intrusive? Because they're all doing the same right. thing to well, an extent. And this is the other point, and I made this point with Steve. Um, Steve uses Windows because he has to. He has a, His bread and butter comes from a product designed for Windows machines. Yeah. Right. Spin right. And yeah. So do you he, think in a perfect world he'd be running Linux or something? I asked him, or? and he said, yeah, I'd be using FreeBSD. Hmm. Well, or, I'm sorry, OpenBSD, which is the most secure okay, operating okay, system, course. except yeah. for the fact that it was co-opted by the NSA. But other than that... <laughs> it's excellent. It's right. excellent. Well, he means he'd use it in offline mode. It would be fine. Yeah. yeah. I think, truthfully, that's that would be Steve's preference. And and I think yeah. he said that. I said, yeah, I'd be using BSD if I didn't have to use Windows. So that's given great. given that you know, you're somebody who wants ultimate pro the most private sy system you can get, yeah, you know, he doesn't trust BitLocker, um, yeah. so I understand his point of view. I don't think that um, most people. I, well, I always argue. You know, we always get in arguments because I always say, "Well, so what if they know if, if they want to serve right. you contextual right. ads?" That's to me, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. But uh, and I'm not, I'm not uh, worried. I'm not worried about Microsoft knowing who my doctor is. I might be worried in the long run about a government knowing who my doctor is. What I'd like to do is slip Microsoft five bucks a month and see no ads. Well, we'd yeah. all like and that. Uh, and I think we, we slip them more products. than five bucks a month, <laughs> don't we? I mean... Whatever well, it is. I mean, you know, well, in yeah. Windows, for example, if if uh, if they're doing this for some greater good plus, you know, the ability to tailor ads to me, which, frankly, I'm not personally super interested in. Um, well, that's... You know, the, if the old... That's a legit question. Why should, should pay. aren't we yeah. buying an operating yeah. system? Why should the operating system have that kind of? <laughs> sure. The other well, point is the, you pay for the newspaper. What is the newspaper ads? Well, speak, but but Microsoft in the past has not done this, so this is new. We got to get used to this notion. Uh, uh, the other the other the other question is, and I this was my supposition. I'd like to know what you think. That remember these settings are now a kind of a one Windows thing. So these settings have to apply to Windows Phone, Xbox, Desktop, yep. Laptop, Tablet. And yep. so uh, this, to a greater or lesser degree, these are needed. On a Windows Phone, you can't use a phone without connecting to the Internet. Right. And a lot of these settings, I believe, debuted with Windows Phone 8.1, right? right? Yep. Or 8. Even. That's absolutely true. So a they've lot, already a been lot doing of this. Since up as debate debuted in Windows Phone 8.1, a lot of the things people are freaking out over the, in a right. good way. Have been in Windows Phone for the last year and a half, right? Uh, but people didn't know because we were the three percent. Three percent of us knew, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Now, and, and as they, more people see, as the um, uh, as uh, Sebastian Anthony points out in Ars Technica, a lot of what we're seeing is Cortana, right? Yeah, right. If you don't use Cortana, a you lot know, a lot of that goes away. Right. Just turn it off. Yeah. Right. You can if turn you, off Cortana in the OS. Off. You can turn off Cortana in yep. the browser. Yep. Turn it off. But by the way, most people are really going to like that. I don't know why you would do that. I, well, I'm curious I, about you know, that. I, I, I'm still, I think the jury's still out on, yeah. the, on the idea of, uh, at least on a desktop, of talking to your computer. Yeah. You can well, type it, in. You don't have to talk. Right. Yeah, you don't have to talk. Right. And, you, you, know, there, you know, if you're a right. keyboard guy, you know, Windows okay. key C. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Windows key C. It brings up yep. Cortana. Um, I think, you, I think have you have to decide, is it, is it more beneficial to you to have, Cortana be able to look at your schedule and say, hey, you should leave for this yes. meeting now. Yes, I love that. Or, I, if me, you don't uh, want that because you're freaked out, shut that up. I can tell. Well, that's but yeah. I turn on every Google Now feature I can find because I love that. I want that so information. This is that. This is, this that. is that. 
Right. And yeah. uh, you know, uh, Google Now, which I believe to be the future UI of Android, period, uh, because it just works. Yes. It provides you the information you want when you want it. Yes. Um, this is Microsoft's attempt to do that. It makes sense. You know, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, it's a. Uh, uh, Clippy as the OS, or, or um, you know, it looks like you're trying to make a, a ransom letter. You know, would you like some help? <laughs> but we um, could do this better, right? And they're doing it better, right. I believe. It's not so intrusive. But it is, it is really the same thing, isn't it? I mean, literally, it's an expansion of that yeah. idea. Yeah. Try to th look ahead at what you're trying to do and and give you proactive <laughs> advice. <laughs> Reverb Mike in our chat room says Cortana's like that horrible college roommate you can't get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you doing? Well, except that you can get rid of it. Hey, hey, what you doing? <laughs> you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I might turn it off on the on the desktop and laptop, cause I, but then leave it on on Windows Phone, that kind of thing, right? You can do that, you right? Know, yeah, I think you can yes. do that. And uh, the part that's intriguing me, because I'm not a big user uh, user of Cortana on my phone right now. It isn't that useful to me. But on my desktop... Yeah. Just being able to set reminders while I'm doing another task or ultimately having Cortana be able to say, hey, you have a meeting with so-and-so next. Here's the last <laughs> three documents you guys work together on. It's, it's is neat. pretty interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that's more interesting to me. So yep. I think I might use I, Cortana was, more. With it's 10. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, you know, it's, it's a lot like, it is a lot like, like Google Now. I see, you know, we're having, we have dinner reservations for tomorrow. The Red Sox are playing the Yankees, which I'm going to miss because I'm here. There's some news items, you know, it, it, <laughs> yeah. it's it's yeah. neat. I mean, it's it's it, it's a cool idea. Mm -hmm. Apparently Windows 10 is coming to Xbox, you know. There's other stuff going on. <laughs> All right, let's talk about other stuff. I get the hint. I'm taking the hint. And I'm, <laughs> I wasn't really a hint. And I'm I was, moving I got on. lost in Cortana's eyes. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, do you want to? Oh, actually, Xbox is the next thing. It is next. It is. Have um, we covered what's in this be, computer before we, article? Before we do that, um, we didn't get to the RSET story, um, which I think people oh, yeah. listening to this might want to. Okay. Yes. So I should mention this because um, people have been asking when are the remote server administration tools RSET coming for Windows yes. 10. The answer is probably not for a couple more weeks, uh -oh. Microsoft has told us. Uh -oh. um, so these are the tools that you use from your server to remotely manage computers. And a lot of people who are, especially in the small business space, are very interested in having these tools because that's how they're going to deploy Windows 10. Um, why aren't they out? My guess is it's probably tied to Windows Server 2016, which we're expecting a new preview of sometime soon. But uh, yeah. otherwise, I don't know why they're not out. They're just not, and they're coming in a couple more weeks. Yeah, we have some sysadmins. This was one of the few room. things we had time to talk about before the show, and I, yeah. as we talked about it, I was reminded <laughs> that yeah. actually this has happened with every single release of Windows. The oh, RSET really? tools okay. All right. often yeah. followed by a couple of weeks for some reason. So, yeah. Mark your Xbox calendars, boys and girls. Windows 10 <laughs> comes to Xbox this November. Paul Therat has the story. Wrong again, Leo. <laughs> Mary Jo Foley has the story. I know. <laughs> Believe it or not, I wrote an Xbox story what? this week. <laughs> what? Yep, Grill has frozen over. <laughs> um, yeah, so... The pigs that are flying by. <laughs> <laughs> we, knew, we knew Microsoft was planning to update Xbox One to uh, Windows 10 Core. We just didn't know when, but now we do as of this week at, at um, Gamescom. They said it's happening in November. You know, I was in Cologne, Germany just a few weeks ago. I should have just yeah. stuck around. You could have stuck yeah, around. Yeah. Yep. So uh, they showed off a quick preview of the new Windows 10 uh, dashboard as part of the keynote. And that's, that's why they're switching out the core. Right now, if you remember, Xbox One runs a Windows 8 core. I believe the way they're going to do this is just as a regular update to Xbox. It's not going to be... Yep. Something right. huge, right? They're just going to give you an update. Uh, the preview of this update is coming in September, they're hinting, so that you'll be able to check so out what Paul, that's as So, uh, Paul, as, uh, what are we, the beta testers on Windows 10, will we yeah, get the, that? So the preview, Xbox One preview yep. program yeah. customers. We'll get that, okay. In September, yeah. Yep. That's soon, next month. Yeah. I know. Yep. Is it, does it look a lot different? I haven't seen the... No, I just and, saw a glimpse. Yeah. Yeah, very very quick glimpses. It, it's not going to look super different. Um, it's not going to look like Windows, you know, ten with a full screen start screen. It's 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 still tailored for that device. 
Um, but, but it's it is, huge yeah, for us because that you know, we've always wanted to do a universal Windows app, and now. Yep. I mean, there wasn't that much incentive to do it uh, for phone. We already have some great dedicated phone apps, thanks, Dimitri. But he's doing a, a XAML app, and that would be nice because it will be here. Then you could use it on the desktop, less less useful. Tablet, somewhat useful. Xbox, awesome. Because that's I'd love people to be able to have a Twit app on their Xbox uh, uh, panel and and launch it and, and right. watch. So you're yeah, you're going to be in the same the unified store. They have the one store oh, that so works great, right? And Cortana also comes to Xbox as right. part of this. Although that's probably not. Well, I should say that it's right? it's an evolution of what they already have. Right? Yeah, we're already talking to yeah. Xbox. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, but it's more um, detailed conversations. You know, in, in in Xbox today, you you basically just say Xbox something very basic. Right. Um, you can have interactive discussions with Cortana, which are very different and more, uh, you know, elaborate. Nice. Than what you can do that today will be great. with uh, Xbox. So, That's a good yeah. use because in a lean back environment, when I'm sitting on the couch watching a big screen TV, it's great to be able to say, oh, you know, <laughs> should I be at work? <laughs> yeah. It's great to be Actually, able to ask questions. I like that. Yeah. I think this that capability is going to be very cool if and when we get... Um, uh, integrated and really nice DVR capabilities for TV shows. You know, Which is also coming, apparently, say, right? They yeah, said that at Gamescom The also. ability to record things in the future, in other words, you're clicking on the channels, yes. you see a show you want to watch, yes. but it's already 10 minutes in, so yes. you say, record the next time this show's on in HD yes. in its entirety, that kind of thing. You know why I love this? Because I, you know, every time you uh, let the controller go to sleep, you have to press the button, it starts. I'm like, I love, so I frequently talk to my Xbox you know, simple things like watch TV. <laughs> so do I. Because <laughs> I don't want to have to fire up the controller to watch TV. Um, so this will be. I'm. I'm. I. I talk to all my digital devices, even the ones that don't I have know. Cortana. I yell. At usually, those. it's not a very. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah, it's not a very positive. <laughs> People think discussion. I am. I diss the PlayStation Four, but I. But I'm. I really believe Xbox One. I know it doesn't sell as well. Blah blah blah. Who cares how it sells? That's not. Mm -hmm. That's not art. My issue. My issue is a good right. technology, and I think it's awesome. You add DVR, Cortana, universal apps. This is going to be great. People should go out and buy it and make sure, but you have to buy the Connect if you want to talk to Cortana. Yeah. Right. 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 Which they've been yeah, cagey about. Bucks, basically. They've been a little right. cagey about that, I, right? Like, what haven't been yeah. directly Because I, I don't think Connect has fulfilled the dream from a sort of gameplay perspective the, the the gestures where you're you know moving your arms around in the air i don't really think that stuff's panned out but you um, use it don't weird. you don't you like say record that oh yeah yeah to the to the mocking of my daughter especially <laughs> just, here, here's that uh, emanating from my office you know record that uh, i just had a great kill yes she's like seriously seriously and i'm like kelly come here look at this dad's a nerd um but yeah, it, it's weird how those things happen, right? Because you, I, I think anyone who was working on this technology probably had this expectation about what would be the big deal. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of cool at first, just like, um, you know, the Wii was kind of cool at first. Um, but uh, sustainable, not necessarily. Uh, the voice stuff, quite sustainable. I mean, so sustainable that we see it in phone, we see it in Windows 10 yeah, today. I mean, yeah. it's, it's really kind of a neat feature. I use it all the time. Um, not as much as I thought I might. I'm like you, Mary Jo. It's like it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to think of a good use case. I know. I mostly it, it use it for like, searches. Yeah. Yeah, but if you were dominating people online, you would have many reasons to. Use it. <laughs> <laughs> Quit that! Oh man, that was awesome. I need like a like a suck it down kind of response, you know, <laughs> where it, it automatically is triggered by me gloating. By the way, that would be a nice feature in all of these. Is um, you know how you can like have shortcuts? Yeah. Yeah. When I say yep. suck it down, record it, upload it, and yep. just record the last sixty seconds right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that would be nice. Um, so that's coming in November beta for September. If you're in the preview on Xbox, yep. and the Universal Store will then include Xbox apps in November, I guess. Or will I'm not X? No, that's the wrong way to say. I'm not really sure. I, I, yeah, we'll yeah. see how that goes. I, I mean, we I, don't know if that's November for sure. Okay. For, um, yep. When that happens, I just but. wonder how how much I should uh, light a fire under Dimitri. <laughs> mm, yeah. No, Dimitri, I'm I'm teasing. I tease. I tease because I love. He's doing this all on his own. He works at Microsoft. Yeah. He wrote that great Windows Phone app, which was the which pure native, beautiful goodness for Twit. 
And uh, he says he's writing an open source XAML universal app for Twitch. Oh, wow, nice. Oh, man. Using the API and everything. So I haven't heard from him lately, but... Uh, open source and Microsoft. What a world. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Nice. Nice. That's ex that's That will probably be the reference mm -hmm. version for a Twit app. Right. If he, uh, you know, using the API and all that. Um, let's take a break. I think it's time to talk about audiobooks because Paul's fading. Yep. It might have something to do with that <laughs> glass of wine fading. Uh, I'm on glass six, I think. Oh, you're, you're back in Lyon. I am. Oh, man, I'm so jealous. I think, I think did I talk about intestines last week? Did this come up? Uh, I think you mentioned yes, it. You did. I believe I've had an intestine based meal at least once a day for the past week. <laughs> And we're talking some pig, not your intestines, but some pigs in, or cows' Correct. intestines. Yes. Uh, it's the food capital of France, which is not the first thing that leaps to mind. You think Paris, maybe, but uh, right. But no, no, the only thing that ever came out of Paris was soup. Really? You know, French onion soup. That's that's Parisian. Yeah, the, best, huh? the bistro meals. Yeah, that's Parisian. Yeah. Yeah. Do like French onion soup. So Paul has been listening to a lot of books. And, of course, when I say listening, I mean audible.com. They are the place to get audiobooks. More than 180,000 downloadable titles across all kinds of literature, fiction, nonfiction. You can even get periodicals, speeches, comedy shows, old-time radio shows. It's an audio potpourri. And we are offering you a free credit so you can get one of those things what you're going to actually do is be signing up for the gold account. That's the credit a month, which is basically a book a month. I think more than 99% of the titles are a single credit. Some of the longer things are multiple credits. Um, and so you can try out the service. You can cancel anytime in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing. That book will be yours to keep, though. You'll also get the Daily Digest of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. It's a, just wonderful. And, you know, I listened to a lot when I was traveling. You know what I did for um, our trip, our river trip? I did this for Venice when we were in Venice. I download history books so yeah. I can list. It's almost like a guidebook in your head. I can listen. Um, and they have the great courses, which are college courses recorded. Um, I just finished the 23 lecture uh, history of the early Middle Ages. Now I'm going to go to the middle, you know, the uh, golden, the high Middle Ages. Because um, we were in that area, you know, Germany was really, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. So what are you listening to? You like fish. So, you know, before the. Yeah, it, before this trip, I, I started looking around and, and thought about things. I actually bought and downloaded the Julia Child's book, My Life in France. I thought, oh, you know, I, good I, idea. I, yeah, uh, it's great. You know, but actually, um, I, I don't remember how I came across this, but actually, I think Raphael might have told me about it. Um, you may recall a year ago, the big book was The Martian, right? Yes, uh, which is uh, one of the best audible experiences of all time. Um, the narrator is this guy R.C. Bray, who's fantastic. I love mm -hmm. this guy. And um, uh, we, uh, Raphael and I had looked him up, and he actually, by the way, I don't know if we ever talked about this, but he actually records under a couple of different names. You so mentioned actually, that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can look this guy up. It's very interesting. But um, you can get a free short story um, by uh, an author and, and narrated by R.C. Bray. That's it, it's sort of a zombie apocalypse kind of a thing. It's a short story. It's an hour and 37 minutes called The Hospital. Ooh. And so before the trip, I had put it on my phone, and when I finished, I would, I'd listened to the Jurassic Park books uh, before this finished one while walking one day and I put this thing on, I got kind of hooked on it. And so this guy has written, uh, the guy, the author being uh, Keith Blackmore has written, I believe four books and full length books in the series, which is called mountain man. And they're kind of like a walking dead kind of a thing. Ah. Uh, Post-apocalyptic zombie, you know, apocalypse kind of thing. I like the last, um, the third you, one, Halifax. Yeah. Cause <laughs> they, they take place in Canada. So ah. it's like a Halifax thing. Halifax. Um, there's a, an omnibus, which is books one through three of the mountain man series and one, Ah. You know, set in one recording, which you can get. It's, you know, 28 hours long, but you can get it for one credit. And so I actually, that's actually what I've been listening to. And um, I have to say, I'm, I'm really hooked on it. So this could be free. 28 hours. That's a good deal. Free. It's, it's a big one. Audible.com slash Windows. That's the URL to use. Audible.com slash Windows. And uh, you'll be able to listen to uh, a book. You're for free and own it for free so you can listen to it forever do get the audible app just updated on uh, windows uh phone but also uh audible is available on ios and android and windows desktop and on and on and on you can even listen now did you know this paul you can listen in the uh, browser no this is new um they now have streaming from the full book 
Yeah, they have streaming from the browser. So nice. you just press the play button, and you can, uh, and you, and that's actually, you know what? That's really great for is a Chromebook. But see, now yeah. I can just leave this window open and continue to listen in the browsers, which I really, I really like that idea. So basically, anywhere where you have uh, HTML5, you can listen, including a Chromebook. Audible dot com slash windows you gotta you gotta just sign up and take advantage of this if you haven't done it i can't believe there's anybody listening to any of our shows that hasn't <laughs> I know. at some point these ads won't make any sense because it'll be like well we got everybody thanks leo <laughs> see ya <laughs> right right yeah, we're done. We have literally saturated the fortunately <laughs> there's always new listeners and uh if you are a new listener to uh the twit podcasts and to windows weekly then you probably haven't heard about audible sign up today you're gonna to love it audible.com slash windows and i always use you notice the slash windows or some sort of tag and that's it doesn't mean that paul and mary joe get more money or i get more money or it but it just helps companies know that oh yeah people listen to windows weekly so use that use that uh code that way because you can also do audible.com slash twit and various other codes but if you use windows then they'll know and uh, that's a oh, good thing. Oh, they'll know. Oh, they'll know. <laughs> they go, that Paul and Mary Joe, they know how to get people to listen to Audible. Well, see, Chicken Curry in our chat room says, I finally pulled the trigger on Audible. It only took me 152 ads, and I finally did it. Uh, let's see. Moving along on Windows Weekly to another topic. we got the Xbox Windows 10 Mobile, right? Because they're going to put, it's one Windows for everything. When do we get it on the, uh oh, actually, Fine. I'm a little peeved. Because they put out, they did put out a list of handsets that will get updated. Well, and the first. 1520 classic, is not on that classic list. Microsoft. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know. This yeah. is. Um, did you write about this, Mary Jo? Or is this no, you uh, did. You you did a good so, post on this. <laughs> yeah, these guys, you know Microsoft. I I kind of love these guys. So <laughs> they they, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they silently put a Windows 10 coming soon page up on their you know Microsoft <laughs> Lumia devices website or whatever. And, uh, you know, sure enough, it says the following Lumia smartphones will receive a free upgrade when available. Lumia 430, 435, 532, 535, 540, 640, 640 XL, 735, 830, and 930. <laughs> Which, if you read it, literally... Leaves, leaves me and Mary Jo out in the cold. Out, yeah. It leaves almost everyone out in the cold. It leaves yeah. icon, outers, uh, icon owners out That's in the cold. That's the Verizon. Even even variants of some of the phones, like the 730, is not included. How about the 635, which is the most popular modern Windows phone of all time? 520, literally the most popular of all time. Um, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. And so <coughs> it's just it's so, so like them to put this thing out. So uh, Neowen asked about this and got a quote from Microsoft, which says, oh, no, this is just an initial list of in-market yeah. devices that will receive I'm sure. the update. Uh, we obviously are striving to bring them to. Yeah. But then they added this little qualifier, very interesting. Uh, uh, to all Lumia devices running Lumia Denim software. That's uh, us. Noting that some features will vary. Well, yeah. but you know what? So this is uh, this is a pet peeve of mine. With my, uh, it used to be with Nokia, but Microsoft uh, more recently, where they commingle the OS version, which is, uh, in this case, um, you know, Windows Phone 8.1, uh, with the firmware version, which only applies to Lumia's, which in this case is Denim. Right. Right. So right. Denim and 8.1 kind of shipped at the same time. Um, coincidentally, this week with this story, there was uh, news that AT&T was not going to deliver Lumia Denim on the 8.30 on that network only, uh, which is causing some people to freak out, which actually is a bit of a misnomer because uh, the 8.30 comes with Denim. It's just that it's not the you know, so-called final version of Denim. You know, there's actually an update for the 830 that's available on other carriers. Will that version of the 830 get Windows 10? Yeah, who knows? You know, it's kind of hard to say. So this is just kind of, um, you know, Microsoft being Microsoft. I don't know what to call this. Plus, you, you included this in your post, too. Neowin went back and asked Microsoft, like, where, where are the rest of the devices? On this list, and they said <clears throat> yes. this is an initial list of in-market devices. So it's a right. subset of of the right. list, right. and they did say that we intend to bring Windows 10 to almost every Lumia device running Denim. And right. yeah, they never said that on the page. Any no. of that. No. And by the way, 
uh, let's see how long it's been now. I don't know if the page has been updated today, but I bet it hasn't because, you know, Microsoft. Um, four or five days later, right. if you were to go to this page, I bet, I'm going to go do it right now and make sure this is true, they have not fixed this, right? And so if you were to go to this page right now, yeah, sure enough. It doesn't, it still says exactly the same thing. They haven't corrected it. Yeah. You know? So again, Microsoft, I just want to say publicly, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for not being able to communicate. You're beautiful. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you're going to put my kids through college. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, when won't we get these updates? <laughs> yeah. When is yeah. it that we're not going to be getting yep. updates? Yep. <laughs> soon. <laughs> soon I won't get updates. Soon. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Real soon now. Okay. Yep. What uh, you know? I I got off the beta track because it was just messing my phone up. Uh, but I presume you have at least one phone still on the beta. Uh, oh yeah, track. Uh, what have they done with that? Has that been updated at all? Not in a couple of weeks. I mean, I, I ever since Windows 10 kind of GA'd last week, there's been a, kind of an increasingly shrill cry to how about a new how about a new build? How about a new build? Yeah. Uh, and then I guess. Uh, did you write something about this leak, or what was this from? No. So this week there was a leak um, out of China, I believe, where they showed um, some of the new. Oh, flagships. so the build itself didn't leak. Yeah. No, oh but, no. The, but the oh yeah, build, build uh, one hundred two four zero from mobile leaked, but okay. Gabe All, our friendly ringleader, said on Twitter this week that the next Windows Ten Mobile preview build that they're going to release is going to be post one hundred two four zero because they have to fix. Um, a bug that was holding it up from going to the fast ring. Oh, like a blocking so, bug or something. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking pretty soon we're going to get a new Windows 10 mobile preview. But it's not going to be 10240. It's going to be later. Yeah, and then on the... These, the these leaked... Uh, uh, I'll alert the, Gabe so we can do it that day. This, but the hardware... Yeah. Is the hardware reek... Leak, hardware reek? Is the hardware <laughs> leak uh, showing Windows 8.1 or what? Is, um, no, so... Ahead, yeah. No, so these these uh, are images from I think they're all from China of of a uh, prototype of the next Windows 10 mobile flagship phones. The 171, uh, it says. Yeah, so well, I think like those are running like Windows 10 mobile. Right? Yeah, that doesn't. Yeah. Mean. Yeah, yeah, they will be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So but we expect as, those to be announced in September. And, right. And either this, this woman has very small hands or this is a very large phone. <laughs> They're big phones. It's a little bit of both. <laughs> They're big tell. phones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Looks good. It uh, looks like a 1520. I mean, it looks like a nice... Yeah. I think one's a 5-inch and one's, what, 5.7? Yeah, I think so. A little I don't smaller. think it's a full 6. Yeah. They look pretty good. This is the... Yeah. Uh, is this the city man and the talk man? I can't see what you're looking at, but the goofy thing that you can see... I don't know if you can see it in the photos you're showing, but... Uh, the power button on the side is located between the volume buttons. No. So if you can kind of picture that. Oh, wow. I know. No. Yeah, that's what That's true. Doing. That is that is the design. No. Uh, well, what's... Okay, so I see the bottom button, that's for taking a picture, right? That's right. The yeah. power Which button. Which will a lot of people, by the way. The right? volume rockers. And then there looks like there's another button up above. What would that be? On the top. Yeah, it looks like there's three buttons in the volume rocker group. But, well, maybe but that's the middle one is power. The, the middle of those is power. That's so maybe. it's volume up, power, oh. volume. Oh, I see what you're saying. So there's volume up, a big power yeah. button, and volume down. <coughs> that's interesting. At least because of the gonna... size of the volume of the power button, you'd kind of be able to distinguish it. It's a little I weird. Guess. I'm it's not. A little that doesn't. That makes me very unhappy. I, I often in inadvertently click the power button on a Lumia. Uh, yeah. Putting it between the volume buttons ensures I will be doing that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you can see there is that even though this is a flagship, this also has soft buttons for the navigation bar, right? So, well, don't we back, want that? Start. I actually prefer that, but some people don't like it. They like the, I, the one thing I would, Yeah. So the one thing I'd say to this is, if and, and Mary Jo, I think you can probably back me up on this. Uh, yeah. If you want a Windows Phone with normal buttons, you end yeah. up hitting the the search button by mistake all yeah, the time. All the time. I do. And yeah. Yeah, and I can't tell you how many times I've I, I've wanted to show someone a picture or whatever it is on my phone, and I hand it to them. Yeah, and they look at it. and They say, "Why am I looking at Bing?" Yeah, and then yeah. it's because you know someone hit the button. I actually, uh, I mean, Google did this, and initially I hated it—the uh, uh, on-screen buttons instead of a physical or a capacitive button—and yeah. I've come yeah. to love it. Um, I I didn't I like, like it at first because it 
it, 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 it means that it's an inconsistent experience. Sometimes the buttons will be there. Sometimes yeah. they won't. Yeah, you have I miss to know the hard camera it. button. That's the one button I miss. On it looks like this one, one has a hard camera button. It looks like it does. Yeah, they bring it. They're bringing yeah. it back on this. Oh, one. good, because I that's the one I really hated not yeah. having. Yeah. yeah. Number two, pre, number two reason people buy Lumia is for the camera. You know, if only we could find it. What's the number one reason people buy Lumia? Windows Phone OS. No, come on, you're joking. <laughs> now, now you're I, I, now you're just joking. I know you're just messing yeah. with me. In my other role as Mark Penn, I, uh, <laughs> no, the cam I would say the camera is the number one reason. No, this is Microsoft says it's number two. They say the OS is number one, or do they? What do they mean? The yep. live tiles and stuff. Okay, the look and yeah. feel. It's pretty. It is pretty. I li I do like it. I I like the. These are not tile. big numbers, by the way. I think like the you know number one reason was like thirty percent. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you think it'd be like 60 It's well distributed. There's lots, in other words, there's lots of reasons people buy Windows Phone. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> there's still lots of reasons they don't, too, by the way. I'm glad, though, these are flagship phones we're looking at in these pictures. These are yeah. not, yes, are. these are, I'm really, yeah. and Microsoft did say, I mean, when Satya Nadella talked to you, Mary Jo, uh, mm -hmm. he did say, you know, yep. we're going to, it's not that we're abandoning Windows Phone. Right. <laughs> per se. <laughs> per se. <laughs> we're writing off every penny we spent on it. Yeah. We're cutting, sure. we're, we're, being very um, focused, right? We're Listen, not, I, you know, if I have to bail my kid out of jail, he's still my kid. Yeah. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I think it's an acknowledgement that we're not, we don't expect to make money on Windows Phone, but we right. believe that it's important for the long term strategic. The end there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Bomber sure. was an idiot, but okay, I guess. You know what? But he was a fun idiot. He was a fun idiot. <laughs> you know, you know, it's like a happy drunk versus a miserable drunk. I want to point you to our triangulation interview on uh, Monday with Mark Johnson, who is an entrepreneur who created PowerSet. Okay. He was at PowerSet, which Microsoft okay. bought and became Bing. Oh, uh, wow, right. And, and he yeah. worked for two and a half years under Nadella at Bing yeah. um, and had it was really... <laughs> He was very outspoken because he no longer works there. He can say anything he wants. He felt Balmer was really not good, made a lot of big mistakes. He thinks Satya Nadella is, is exactly the right guy and doing exactly the right thing. He said he was very afraid that Microsoft's board would choose someone right. outside of Microsoft who would have slashed yeah. and burned. And he said Nadella knows that there's much good inside of the company and wants to preserve what's good. Um, but, you know, I think I feel like he didn't say this, but I think it's pretty clear. He feels like he's Nadella has been fixing a lot of mistakes Balmer made, which would include mm. the Nokia acquisition. Of course, Nadella sure. was on record against There's that. There's not a lot more fixing that can be done there. <laughs> no, <laughs> you fixed much, it now. <laughs> yeah. You fixed the heck out of that thing. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad he hasn't abandoned yeah. making new devices. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, they can't. I mean, they kind of can't. Right. I, right. They need to continue forward. But. Yeah. And, you and, know, they're looking for the places where they think they can add value. So things like they've said continuum on phones, they think gives them a differentiator. They're just not going to try to go head to head and make the same old phones no. over and over. That's kind of an acknowledgement that it's too late to go head to head anymore. You right. can't. Mm. Yep. You just can't. Yep, that yep. ship has sailed. That ship has sailed. Will there, um, somebody's saying in the chat room, and I hope this is true, the hello camera, will that be on the phone? Yeah, but it's uh, reportedly an iris scanner, not a facial scanner. Yeah. Well, that's kind of interesting. You mean I'll have to do this? I'll have to hold the yeah. phone up to my eyeball? Yep. Yep. And eh, it's me. Hello. I know. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Hello, it's me. <laughs> not a fan of that. I, I have to say, you know, uh, Sam, uh, Apple has succeeded and Samsung has tried to do the fingerprint reader <laughs> thing, and it works really well when you do it right. Um, putting the phone up to your face? That's yeah, a little weird. I am, I'm sorry, I'm giggling because apparently the autocorrect in our chat room replaces Nadella with Nutella. So. <laughs> yeah, that does happen. <laughs> yes. oh. It happens. I told you, it doesn't, Microsoft's, Microsoft Word's original um, autocorrect for my last name was Thrust. Thru well, that's good, too. <laughs> in fact, is Thrust.com taken? Because I... Uh, yeah. I think yeah. that would be a good... That's my answer. wrestling name. You know, I kind of blew it. We... we, 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 we uh, we referred to tangentially this DVR feature in Xbox. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit about oh, it? Oh, right. uh, just I, briefly. I, the only thing know. that makes me nervous is it sounds like it's OTA only. It is literally OTA only. So uh, you got to remember with this stuff, it's, it's going to be baby steps. And so when the Xbox One first launched in, uh, I think it was Europe and Australia, they offered, uh, not DVR, uh, a TV tuner 
uh, hardware add-on that would let you watch and pause live TV. Um, in April-ish, they released a hopage um, add-on, you know, which is like a, yeah, a was 10-year-old a, piece of hard yeah, USB video capture thing. cards, yeah. yeah. Uh, it would allow you to do the same in the United States and Canada. So you can do that right now. Sometime in early 2016, well, actually, before that, I should say, uh, there'll be a micro, uh, an Xbox-branded version of the TV tuner device like they have in Australia and Europe uh, shipping this fall, I believe, in the United States. And then in 2016, a little later than I was told, but in 2016, they're going to start offering DVR capabilities on these devices. Now, these devices are over-the-air devices, right? They, they can't connect to a cable TV signal, uh, you know, digital satellite, whatever. Uh, they're not cable card. They don't have those kind of capabilities. So, of course, a lot of people are waiting for DVR capabilities in Xbox One. A lot of people who want there to be a Windows Media Center replacement on Xbox One, which is, by the way, very feasible, are going to be a little disappointed yeah, by I this. Am. But I, but I, I really believe that this is something Microsoft is working toward, that they yeah. have to take these kind of steps to get there. Yeah. And the reason is they have so many partners in these businesses that they need to embrace Xbox One. And if they just come in and say, oh, by the way, we're replacing you too, um, they're not going to have those partnerships. And, and I think that's why this hasn't just happened. So maybe there'll be so, a third-party add-on that will uh, use cable card or, and... A Microsoft official add-on that will do cable card right. off of USB or something. I, I don't know. I, I, that I don't know anything about, but it seems to I mean, me that... A market. I just feel like that's such a good market. Because mm. uh, it's a transitional... Div OTA is not very useful for anybody, but but, but no, if you could no. record cable... It's great if you want PBS or a local sports show or something. I, got, I get no a OTA over the air. It depends. Yeah, it depends on where you are. So way, I, they, I would love, they, though, something that supported cable because it's a good transitional device as we move toward IT. PTV, it would yes, sell as, I mean, I know it's not a huge market, but it would sell as well as the TiVo. Uh, I, I, it would be as good the other, as the TiVo, I, I think. Yeah, it's possible Microsoft is betting that these other services will be enough of a kind of a cable replacement thing that it won't matter anymore. Like, if you think about, if you're going to go cable free, the thing that you're going to miss is actually what's provided by OTA, right? Right, if you're uh, in an OTA local area. News. Yeah, yeah. If, right. Local news, local sports, right? So, um, I think for a lot of people, this will in fact work. I, I do really believe that they're going to do the full-blown media center replacement um, at some point. I think it's about partnerships. So it's a step in the right direction. Good. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Moving on. Quickies here. Sway, we're happy to see, is yeah. now uh, out of beta. It's official. Yes. It's out for Windows 10 today, too, in the store. As an app? Oh, nice. Yes, an app. Nice, nice, nice. I know. Yep. Uh, it's also generally available now and no longer in preview for iPhone, iPad, and it's rolling out to Office 365 business customers. So it's too. officially a part of Office. Yeah, it is now. Yeah, yep. Nice. I mean, it's not in the Office suite of core, like it's not in that core Office suite, but it's considered part of the Office family for sure. Right. Uh, yeah, and By the, the way, Windows 10 app looks good. Change? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I, I, have you noticed that you know they they've uh, they've started referring to it as a like a storytelling digital app. storytelling app. Oh. So they've they've kind of um, they've kind of yep. you know solidified the uh, single sentence mm -hmm. description yep. of this product, right? Because in the past it was yep. a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of yep. that's pretty good, and it's it free. It's free. You do not have you to have Office to use it. Nope, or a subscription. You don't have to, yeah. unless unless you want to use it through your You don't your even office. have to have a Microsoft account, actually. I, I think anyone can yeah. use it. Oh, nice. I think, well, that makes I sense because it's on an iPad. and. Yeah, you might have to sign up for a Microsoft ID. Do you? Uh, I'll I find out soon. There was a blurb in the thing about not needing one, but yeah. It, yeah, I sure. can't remember now. But uh, the what's cool about the Windows 10 version of this app, there's a couple new features. One of them is if you're using Sway on a Windows 10 device and you want to use the camera on the device to take a picture where you are in real time, oh, right. you could take a picture right. and incorporate that right into a Sway. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, also, you can use Sway offline in the Windows 10 version. I don't know if you can... <laughs> other app versions but say you're using sway to present at a conference and the wi-fi is kind of iffy um you can use your you could build your sway use it offline and and just use it like a, a presentation tool basically so that's kind of cool too nice oh yeah and we should talk about docs.com because microsoft a long time ago had a website called docs.com and originally what that was uh was a place to use office web apps on facebook 
Now they're taking that website and they're turning it into a, a place where you could post your office documents publicly if you want to. So say you built a Sway, uh, you use Sway to build a brochure or you're using it to show people your portfolio. You could park this Sway in docs.com, search engines will start being able to crawl it and you can use it as an actual document that you want people to see, not something that you just want to keep for a private group. So that's, that's I am going to use this more now that there's a Windows desktop app for yeah. it. I think yep. that's a more natural place hmm. to work for me. You know, get the pictures in on the phone. Yeah. And then yeah. when build I want to build it on, build it on the, yeah. Yeah. yeah and it is it is coming, uh, oh, not Sway, uh, not document. Uh, Sway.com is also coming to Windows Phone, which is it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Sometime in the next Love it. few weeks. Love it. Uh, <laughs> updates to Outlook on the web. New look. New look, new UI. They're adding a lot of the features. Um, new name. That they've... What? Oh, yeah. Got no. The new name is killing me. What are they calling it? <laughs> uh, Outlook on the For web? Outlook on the web is the formal name. It used to be Outlook Not to web. Be confused app. with Outlook.com, which, by the way, also on the is web. Is Outlook on the web. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> you know? oh, and I am confused. Okay. So they're not changing Outlook.com. They're changing Outlook on the web, which is not Outlook.com, but it no, is on the web. It's Exchange Online, which is it part is. of Office 365. Which, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not the so web app either. Yeah. It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got uh, it. It is really that, confusing. It's, it's goofy. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember it it, uh, if you're an enterprise and you're using Exchange, you can you have a web have interface your... to Outlook. Yep. Correct. We do, we do that uh, clear channel where I, where I work does that. Mm -hmm. And then you can log in on your, okay. It's the web version of your Outlook. There you go. That's what it is. <laughs> it's, it's, yep. it's a web version it's, of your Outlook. Yeah. <laughs> it's AKA Outlook yeah. on the web. And, and so it's getting all these things that have been in other versions of Outlook. You're getting sweep and archive and undo and single line view. So they're changing the UI to make it more like other versions of Outlook. Yep. Yep. Which, by the way, is great because Outlook.com for a long time has had these features that you just mentioned, which are all excellent. And Outlook Web Access, as this used to be called, I still think of it as OI. Yeah, right. Yep. Um, has not. And it's always been kind of a second class citizen, even though the back end was much more powerful. Um, and so they're finally, you know, picking up some of the the functionality they've seen you know, they already had in all of and Outlook.com. Finally, uh, Microsoft is expanding group voice and video calling and Skype, the free part of that. I did yeah. install Skype desktop immediately and it's kept mm -hmm. open all the time. I guess that's gonna be the new messaging app. Yeah, well, they're also building, for Windows 10, they're building um, separate messaging and video and chat. Well, they are, but it'll be based right. on yep. Skype. Right, they're going to be, like, taking Skype as it exists today as a unified app and introducing those as separate standalone apps. So you'll have a choice oh, going forward. You'll be able to use the Skype you already have that's all integrated with everything that's in one smart. app. That's smart. Because some people have, just want messaging. Yep. They want text messaging. Yep. And they don't want, yep. I don't need video calling. It's funny, I, was, exactly. I wasn't I was sure how you were going to respond to that because I, as Mary Jo described it, I thought, it sounds like cancer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you mean you know? metastasizing? Yeah. Yeah, like it's like well, it just kind of shows up everywhere. Right? You yeah. know, it, it kind of expands across. No, the but what it does do is it breaks Skype capabilities into chunks, and you can use the mm -hmm. chunk that you like. Yep. Which I yep. think is smart. You know, increasingly, I feel like Windows 10 succeeds where Windows 8 was intended to succeed, which is in making me as a mobile device user comfortable with a desktop. It's it's kind of unifying how things work. And actually, here, you know, in the case of Skype, by the way, the reason it's smart. Um, when you want to write an email message, mail. You want to right. deal with your schedule, under. Right. If when you want to send a text message to someone, message. Delete a message. Yeah. Skype doesn't mean anything to anybody. Really. Right. It's a brand, you know, its brand is popular. I but, don't want to have you know, Skype running all the time. I just want messaging. Me. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fine. I, I get it. But I feel like we've been down this road before. You know, I, Microsoft did a really neat messaging thing. I think Windows Phone, especially where the SMS MMS messaging app could handle Skype, it could handle Facebook, it, you know, and you could do handoffs. You could say something like, once you were on a cellular network and, and the other person hit an MMS or whatever, you could switch over to that and it could kind of go back and forth. And if you went onto a, uh, like a Wi-Fi network, you could switch to a Skype video call. It was kind of a really cool feature. Well, I, I presume like the handoff of, will continue. I don't think that means they're not going to allow handoff. Well, it went away. I mean, in the interim, it's it's oh. been 
it's so I can't. And so oh, well, that but that's an easy yeah, thing to fix. They should fix that. Yeah. But see, what's confusing so. to me, so I have Skype running as a messaging app, but I still get like, oh, you have $11 in credit. What? Huh? Oh, you, you want to make free video call? It's That's not, I don't want to yeah, see all, that. That's It's a mess. Right. It's a mess. It's a yeah. mess. So if you want to yep. use it for messaging, it should, I you know, I think this is smart. And I do feel like this Here's is how what it I don't understand. on mobile. Uh, I, I just, Even I Facebook just ran did that. So we're in, we're in the airport in um, in Venice, I guess. And uh, very briefly on my screen, what flashes is something I've only seen one other time, which is, hey, you can connect to Skype Wi-Fi, right? Have you ever used this feature? Does anyone know what this is? It's actually yes. kind of interesting. <laughs> yes, I have. So the, the point of Skype Wi-Fi is you're on a, you're like in an airport, right? Or hotel or whatever it is. And it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, a Wi-Fi connection that you have to pay for. So you have to pay for it. So if you don't have Skype Wi-Fi, it's, it's Boingo or it's whatever those things are called, you know, like a, whatever those services. Heat hotspots, yeah. 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 So in order to get onto that thing, if you don't have an account, is you have to type in all your information. Here's my name, here's my address, here's my phone number, here's my credit card number, here's my, you know, whatever it is. Create an account. You know, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So with Skype Wi-Fi, you've already, you've paid for Skype credit. You've already done this. Skype Wi-Fi will handle all that stuff on the back end. You'll get a price that is good or actually sometimes better than what the service is charging you. And you don't have to enter any information because it's in Skype, right? So yeah. you can just say, yeah, I want to connect to this thing. And that's actually a cool thing. But here's the problem. It's in Skype. That should be a feature of Windows. It should be in the Wi-Fi connectoid or whatever we're calling it today that's in Windows 10, right? Like, that should just be a thing that Windows does. It shouldn't be, I shouldn't have to think Skype. I should think Wi-Fi, you know? That when I go to connect to those Wi-Fi wi hotspots, that should just be in there. Yeah. In other words, Windows will say, hey, don't fill out any information. We have, you already have credit. We'll, we'll handle it. You know, well, um, it's, it could it's be. A I mean, that's what Wi-Fi sense. I mean, that seems like it's part of the Wi-Fi sense. I, I guess what I'm saying is, I think this is what's going to happen. Right. It's not available today. Right. So today, you know, like you just showed, you have the Skype desktop app. There's no that integration doesn't exist. But as they break down the Skype components and kind of spread them, exactly. them through Windows 10, uh, exactly. maybe that's something that could come. I th that would be a wonderful feature. Threshold two, baby. <laughs> no, seriously, right? I mean, any one of us would, would benefit from that. I agree. Yeah. That's why I'm not so upset about the idea that they're separating messaging out. That makes all makes sense, if you ask me. It does make sense. And, it, and initially, maybe there'll be some hardship for users who expect Skype to be Skype. Right, right. But I mean, they're not, not going to call it, that. are they going to call it Skype messaging? No. Probably. Just, I bet that's what they'll oh, do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, they'll call, I bet they'll that have That might be confusing. Thing. Skype messaging, Skype, Skype logo, video. Say messaging provided by Skype. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, like Windows uh, 2000 was built on NT technology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was shocked, shocked, I tell you, when I, I saw the headline this week that here, here maps were bought by Audi, BMW, and Mercedes, not by, what is Microsoft going to do? What's going to happen here? Well, you know, not coincidentally, I, the, the thing that's been happening in the background is Microsoft is consolidating its business. It's focusing on the core products and services that it does. And as it turns out, mapping and location services is not, is not one of those things. And so what they've determined is that they can license this technology from other companies. They did a deal with Uber uh, within the past 30 days, I want to say. Actually, it was right around the same time as uh, the Windows Phone debacle stuff happened. Uh, lesser news, you know, they were also getting out of location and mapping. And so I think it was about 100 employees went over to Uber. Uh, their technology went over to Uber and they're going to license that stuff from Uber. Um, they licensed today mapping and, you know, location technology from, from a variety well, of companies, that's including... That's here smart. And here. That's yeah. smart. So Stick to your knitting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so presumably... Uh, and actually, no, not presumably, explicitly, uh, the, here, this business unit that will be owned by, or business, that will be, be a business, that will be owned by this consortium of automakers will continue to license that technology to the companies they're licensing to and to others. Right. They'll license it to other automakers. Uh, Microsoft will continue to be able to take advantage of it in Windows, Windows Phone, et cetera. So. What, did, what is the Uber piece? What are they doing? Well... What are they doing? <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> what are um, they doing? <laughs> Uber, obviously, well, Uber's business is based on mapping and location, too, right? The idea is you can hold up an app and you can see where the car is and that kind of thing. Yeah, Calacanis um, so thought it, that uh, Uber would be the first person to buy here. 
Well, Uber tried to, but see, yeah. uh, and I'm I'm kind of reaching a bit here, but my my guess, my sort of understanding of how that went down was Uber actually offered more money than this consortium did, but it was based mostly in stock and that kind of thing. There wasn't cash, right. and uh, these other companies, of course, have cash. So uh, I think this uh, that Nokia felt that the Uber offer was a little dicey and wasn't necessarily in their best interest, um, and so I think with this deal. Nokia has really severed itself from no its own kidding. past, right? Yeah, they're the, a new, the company they're, we they're knew is Nokia company. is gone. Yeah, yeah. So, and and you know, I mean, here was not expensive. What was a few? It wasn't hugely expensive. I thought it was a little bit under three billion yeah, uh, dollars. It's um, not much. That's less than WhatsApp. Yeah, it, 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 it's you know what? It's a very resource intensive business. You have to go out in the field and actually map things, right? Yeah. You need physical. Yeah. Yeah. Resources, cars and cameras, and it has to be up to date. It's, it's expensive. It's, it's very, I get it. yeah, yeah. It's it's. Uh, it, I, I guess I would guess that that's why Microsoft ultimately decided this wasn't necessarily where they needed to be. Let other people do that. We'll pay the you know we'll just I, pay for the. Lessons. I guess the maps, uh, the here maps in Germany are going to get really good, and in the rest of the world, it's like well, <laughs> you should be in Germany. It's the best place. Well, because of the oh, I say yeah. yeah. Well, it's a German auto <laughs> consortium that purchased them. Oh, yeah, I hope I hope they stay good because the here maps I were really them. good. I used it in offline. Germany yep. because they had the I downloaded them all so I could see where the boat was going without Wi-Fi. It was awesome. Yeah, I have, mm -hmm. I have literally taken advantage of that feature on this trip. We downloaded sure. all the maps. Yeah, uh, for this area and also for uh, Venice. And by the way, I, I don't know if I talked about this, but the people were home swapping with. I left them, them a Lumia. I put the maps wow. on there. I downloaded for all of New England and. Uh, I put our, you know, uh, like uh, tiles in the front for both my wife and I and our phone numbers all the way so you can Isn't reach us. I put a tile great. on our house. So they can find it with the maps. What a good idea. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. It's just kind of a neat, you know, because we've been talking, you know, we, we never met them in person, but we actually Skyped with them the week before the swap. And uh, they don't have smartphones. And it was like, okay, so, I, you know, we can put an old fashioned GPS in the car, but it's not super up to date. And I thought, you know what? I have all kinds of phones. I can give them a phone and what they can a use good it. Idea. Just, all yep. so they can, that's know, like so. that's like checking into an Airbnb and getting an iPad. Yep. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, it's a kind of it's a concierge service when you it go is. over the <laughs> free smartphone. I hope they don't take it home yeah. with them. Where are they yeah. from? Uh, Leon. Well, they're from Leon. They're, they're oh, from oh, it's a swap. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So we're in there. In there. Yeah. Oh, that's there. nice. What did they leave you? A map. A paper map. Yeah, a paper map. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no, they have a, their car has a GPS in it. Ah. So actually, their the GPS yeah. in their car is wonderful. So, yeah, yeah, we forget how nice standalone GPSs were. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's in. By the way, uh, on a screen you can actually see is not such a horrible yeah. thing either. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 All righty, we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, it's the back of the book, the best part, the back of the book. Paul's tips, picks, enterprise picks, code names. And stout. But <laughs> yep. wait, wait. obviously. Stout. <laughs> what would you do without stout? But first, what would you do without what would we do without IT Pro TV? We love this relationship. They started a couple but now it's been almost two years, I think. It wasn't that Tim and Don were new to this. Um, Tim Broom and Don Pezzett were uh, doing this all along, IT trainers. But they saw what we were doing here. Uh, they saw a talk I gave, and they said, you know, wouldn't it be cool to do kind of like a twit for IT? Like uh, live broadcasts, you could watch, you could learn, you could earn a certificate, all the kinds of training that they were doing, but do it in this model. And uh, you know what? They've nailed it, knocked it out of the park. They're really surpassing us now. They've got two studios. They do 50 live hours every week. And, of course, all that live content gets saved to their library where there are now hundreds, hundreds of hours of content so that you can get your Apple or Microsoft or Cisco cert, A+, CCNA, Security+, Plus, network security, desktop support for Linux and Windows and OS X. Uh, they've got a, if you're learning Windows Server and Windows Support, they've got a virtual machine sandbox lab. You don't even have to have a Windows machine at home. If you've got a browser, an HTML5 browser, you could set up a Windows Server, set up clients, screw it up, no harm, no foul. They've got a new iPhone and Roku app. You can resume playback between devices. So you're at home, you're watching the show on the Roku, you get up, you pick up your iPhone, you go out the door, you'll pick up exactly where you left off. On 
demand and live to your Chromecast, your computer, your mobile device. If you want to prepare for an exam, it's great because, of course, you're going to learn the material. They even chunk it up according to exam questions so you can, you know, polish up that page that you really had trouble with. And they have the Measure Up Practice exams as part of your subscription. That's worth 79 bucks. Live chat, just as we have during the show. Web-based Q&A specific to individual study topics. This week, one of the things I like, they have a basic plan that's free. And, but you can't watch the, pre the recorded stuff. You can only watch the live stuff. But that's actually a pretty good deal. Free. Uh, right now, they're recording uh, their new courses on CompTIA's A+. And CASP certs. Starting next week, Microsoft Exchange Server 2013. And MTA Windows Server Fundamentals. They start live 9.30 a.m. Eastern every morning, Monday through Friday. And you can watch it free with a basic account. They've also now got a, this is new, a free uh, a series of free videos on their blog specifically covering new features in Windows 10. That's nice. So if you're supporting Windows 10 or you're getting ready to support Windows 10, go to itpro.tv slash blog and you could check them out. My suggestion is get a subscription. They're flat rate, normally $57 a month, $570 for the uh, whole year. But of course, we got a special offer. When you go to itpro.tv slash ww and use the code ww30, you're going to get 30% off forever, the lifetime of your account. That makes it about less than $40 a month, $400 for the whole year. It's a good deal. IT Pro TV is the way to supplement if you're in a, in a tech college or you're doing it yourself. It's really everything you need to jumpstart your career in IT or, or improve your skills or branch out into new areas. Incredible. Tim and Don have done such a great job. ITPro.tv slash WW. The offer code WW30 will save you 30% off forever. You're watching Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. And it's time for what I joshingly call the back of the book, the juicy stuff. <laughs> Paul's pick or in tip of the week. Start us with a tip. So um, I've, I've talked a lot about this book that I'm writing, but no one has actually seen it. So it's almost like I've made it up. <laughs> but I am, in fact, working on Pictures book or 10. it didn't happen, Paulie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, I have written about 200 pages of it. Um, I intended to originally to ship it, you know, the first version, which would be incomplete on the 29th of Jan you know, July alongside Windows 10. And as uh, everyone probably knows, I... Of course, I'm traveling to Europe like an idiot right around the time of the Windows 10 launch. And unfortunately, the Windows 10 launch was such a mess that between the travel and all the email and the work I had to do, just normal, uh, it's been hard to get that thing out. So um, I actually will be launching the first version of the book, which will be incomplete and will be over 200 pages long this weekend. Uh, and then I'll update it, you know, over the next few uh, weeks and months and everything, and, and we'll get up to we'll get it up to speed. But um, I just wanted to provide an update on that. So um, I will write an article, a post about this on the on Therat.com, and then it will be available on um, on what on <laughs> FieldGuideBooks.com Saturday or Sunday, I think. Um, so I just need to I it just I just needed life to calm down so That's I could. That's awesome. Yeah, get it going. So Fieldguidebooks.com. Yeah, which resolves to the Windows 8 one book site today, but will resolve to a new site soon. Soon, the Windows 10 Field Guide. Nice. Yep. Oh, sorry that's taking so long, but I'll it's be just reading been it the crazy. minute the minute it's out. I gotta learn all this stuff. And if you don't want to pay for the book, which is completely understandable, I mean, a lot of the stuff, you know, obviously I'm putting stuff on the site every day, so um, you know, it'll be kind of a compendium of. Of knowledge. <laughs> you know, it's such a pukey thing to say. Whatever it is. Uh, a compendium of a lot <laughs> a of this stuff. A compendium of knowledge. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. world's, well, it, all the world's knowledge in one book. <laughs> it will be everything you need to do to get ahead in life. Sort wow. Of. That's awesome. Can't wait. Windowsfieldguide.com. In a, a slightly drunken state the other night, I, I described success as the nexus between luck and success. <laughs> That's right, Paul. So you, you, can, you, can expect, you can expect 200 pages of that kind of wisdom. It's, it's exactly right. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. That's actually yeah. a good line. I am a writer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you know. Oscar Wilde level, but it's pretty good. Nope. Yep. 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 We all have our little match, Leo. <laughs> I like Mine it. Mine is just doling out knowledge. 
It's kind of a Jack Handy level comment. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, software uh, pick of the week. Bad. So this is one, you know, we've been waiting for it for a while. Some months ago, uh, uh, Audible pulled their app from the Windows 8 store. And uh, this week they released the universal version of this app to the Windows 10 store. And uh, it's awesome. It's actually oh, really nice. Get, so get it right now. if you've used the Windows Phone version of the app, it will be semi-familiar, except that, of course, it's tailored for the landscape orientation of a, you know, like a Windows screen. And it's, it's, it's awesome. It's actually really, really cool. Getting it now. And, um, That's great. I, I've given, you know, Amazon, uh, Amazon owns Audible, and I've given them a, little, a bit of, um, you know, flack for not updating things a lot. And the Audible app in the past year has come along great. On Windows Phone and now on Windows 10, and uh, you know maybe I don't want to dream too much, but possibly if we could ever see a, a first class update for the Kindle app, everything would be right in my world. But for today, I'll take this. the The Audible app is really, really neat uh, on Windows 10. It works great. Great. That's really great. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, nice pick. Mary Jo Foley has an Enterprise pick for us all. I do. Uh, Enterprise pick is the Microsoft Identity Manager 2016 product. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an identity management product that's meant to be deployed on premises. It's not a cloud product. It's the product that used to be called Forefront Identity Manager. I don't know if people remember, but yeah, back yeah, yeah. around yeah, yeah. 2012, Microsoft had all these Forefront products and then they started killing them off one by one. And the one they kept was Forefront Identity Manager, which they then renamed to Microsoft Identity Manager. Um, so this product lets admins synchronize identities directly to the cloud, even though it's on-prem. Um, it all uh, does things like custom up, customizable password management, um, enables two-factor authentication, deeper attribute integration with Active Directory, all these really awesome things that you might want if you're somebody who cares about enterprise management. Oh, <laughs> Paul's man. like, no, you wouldn't want them. <laughs> you, that sounds terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, this product is rolling out as of this week on MSDN and the Microsoft Volume Licensing sites. So if you have either of those kinds of licenses and access, you can get it. And one, one other interesting thing is um, we've talked a lot about uh, Enterprise Mobility Suite, which is a whole suite of Microsoft products for, for managing uh, mobile devices across all different platforms and different operating systems. I believe that Identity Manager is also going to be an optional piece of this through Azure Active Directory Premium. So we, we should find out in another couple of days what all the permutations and combinations are on licensing for this. But uh, as of now, if you have a have either MSDN or a volume license, you can go and download it. Unless Microsoft has pulled the bits, which I heard they might. I think it got out there a little early. <laughs> so it's coming this week if it's not still there now. Stop pulling my bits. Don't pull my bits. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds That's even better after a couple of glasses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nexus between my bits and success. <laughs> um. <laughs> and the rumor, I love rumors, the rumor of the yeah. week. Well, Paul's going to help me with this one, too, because we're, we're getting asked a lot about Surface Pro 4. They just came and out with Surface Pro 3, really? Last year, right? Has it Surface been that Pro long? 3. You know what, yeah. actually, so the delta between this version of Surface Pro and the previous is the longest in the history, you know, the very short history oh, wow. of Surface. I so, didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah and I think that Surface speaks to the 3. success of Surface Pro. Right. Surface 3 No, no, but is, I mean for the Pro line. For the Pro line. Oh, yeah. For the Pro line. So Surface 3 came out um, earlier this year, and but that was meant more for students. Um, that was the primary target audience for that product. Surface Pro 4 yeah. is what we think will be the successor to Surface Pro 3. We think it'll be Intel-based, probably Skylake. Um, everybody's yep. guessing. Um, we think Microsoft might announce this in October. Both Paul and I, I think, have heard October yep. as a possibility. October, yep. Uh, otherwise, you know, in terms of what other new features might be part of this, I don't know if the Hello facial recognition technology will be part of it. I would think it would be built in somehow. Yep. And the reason really I think can. it would be is, 
you know, think about why is why is Microsoft still building tablets? They're building tablets to show off their software and their services. That's the main reason they're still doing this. So I'm betting Pen will be part of this still. Um, I think they will definitely try to make the Hello technology something that you can showcase with this device. Will it, will it look much different form factor wise? Probably not because what they have said in the past is your existing peripherals like the dock and your covers should still work with this version of Surface Pro. So I'm thinking screen size probably stays the same. Um, kickstand, you know, will they do anything new or different with kickstand? I don't know. But, you know, I think the thing to really kind of focus on here is we aren't getting a lot of leaks on this device. And a couple of our contacts have said the reason we're not is because it's more of an incremental upgrade to the Surface line. And it's not going to be some rather than giant, huge thing. TikTok, right? So I don't need to uh, wait if I wanted one. Well, that's the thing. So, I mean, if you, you know, if you need a computer, you buy a computer. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but if you can wait till October, you might want to wait. Yeah, I, because the main the main um, claims to fame of Skylake are better battery life on, on and lower power consumption, right? <laughs> Aren't those yeah, the it's, two it's of the It's faster, but, too, though. No, it's faster, yeah. too. Is it faster, but, but too? This, but the, what you're saying is based on comparisons with the previous gen. Surface Pro 3 doesn't run the previous gen. It runs two previous gens. Oh, so the difference true. in those things could actually be pretty phenomenal. It's so, on Haswell, not Broadwell. Yeah, depending on the device you're talking about, going to Skylake may not be a big deal. But when you talk about Surface Pro 3 to 4, it actually could be a pretty phenomenal update. Mm -hmm. You know, performance, battery life. Et cetera. Yeah. Hopefully, right. it'll be and quieter, obviously, you know, from a fan yeah. Perspective. Maybe some people are saying the one thing they'd love is a fanless device. I don't know. Um, yeah. What the, what so you're that? getting four, now 14 nanometers, which you which you weren't with Haswell. They're saying better, right. like 30 percent in some cases, better battery life than ha than uh, Broadwell. Which is and and Surface Pro 3 gets good battery life. You, I mean, you know, so now you'd be talking 12 hours probably. Yeah, mm. yeah. Then it becomes. Uh, you know, it it through depends all that. on the on what you use, but it could be twenty percent faster or more, especially if you're coming. There, from there's Haswell. there has never been a time when I've picked up a Surface Pro three and thought, man, if this thing could just be thinner, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's right. not it is not a it's thick not, device. It's they not that thin. Change. Yeah. Well, no, it's not that thick. I mean, it's not it's not, not horrible. Thick, like in other words, I don't I don't thin. think it is. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's yeah. it, it's it's the thinness you need to have a USB port on it. Right. right. That's the right. thinness. And that's I think that's the right size for a device that is technically a computer. Mm -hmm. You know? It's not an iPad. Yeah. It's never gonna be that thin. Or if it is, it's gonna come with some kind of compromise. Um I think for a pro device where you're clipping on a keyboard that's just about full sized and you're using it as a computer, I think that we've reached the right form factor. Mm -hmm. So if you can make the thing a little bit you know, mm -hmm. quieter, better battery life, better performance. Right, that's kind of the right the holy trinity of <laughs> Service Pro upgrades, I guess. Good. Well, yeah, but I, we should know, say these wait. are rumors. We haven't. Yeah. I don't yeah. think anybody's had a screenshot of a engineering prototype or anything no. like that. Um, but here's something, actually, Mary Jo, you appreciate this. I mean, we we talked yeah. about the the fact that Microsoft originally intended to ship Windows 10 in October. And that right. they pushed it back to July to beat the back to school time frame. Well, it's very easy to push software back. You can just cut some features, no big deal. Uh, hardware is not so easy. And my, uh, this is speculation, but my belief is that they originally intended to ship you know, Surface Pro 4 alongside Windows 10, of course, with the new device, just like they did with the original Surface. And that when Microsoft pushed back Windows 10, you know, there was nothing Surface could yeah. do. Skylake wasn't going to be ready in time. There's not, you know, there's nothing they could do. So now it's just going to ship when it was going to ship originally. Probably with TH two, you know, threshold mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Uh, the one the one thing we didn't mention is screen resolution. I've seen some people speculating um, that that could be improved with the Surface Pro four. I don't have any info. It's on pretty that. good now, isn't it? I know. I think it's pretty good. I mean, you, there's you know, there's a point beyond which you don't need to go once you can't yeah. see the dots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. You're you're adversely impacting battery for no exactly. good reason. Exactly. But a lot of phones are doing that, I got to say. It yep. you could perhaps improve color rendition, although I think the Surface Pro is wi widely agreed to have the, one of the best screens on the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yep. I'd love so to see a type C connector. Let's get rid of the Pogo <laughs> plugs and yeah. uh, sure. do a standardized type C connector. I think that's By the way, you know, it, you know, once the world moves to type C, 
then you can start talking about a thinner Surface Pro. Right. Right. And it's Type C's faster USB. It's um, it's. I don't think Surface Pro Four is the time for that. I, I think really? because right. of the. Right. Well, because they promised compatibility with accessories, which includes oh. the docking right. station. That re right. that kind of requires it to be the same thickness, or if not, at least a, they'd have to give out like a little, you know, a <laughs> piece of plastic or something yeah, would stick behind it to let yeah. it fit. Uh, it'd be kind of goofy. So, uh, I think this time we're going to see a pretty incremental device. By the way, I installed the Audible uh, app on Windows 10. You're right; it's great. Literally looks. It's good. beautiful. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Yeah, it works great. It's yeah. really nice looking. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I'm I'm to the point where I could be I could be talked into a Surface. Yeah. I love this Dell though. This is nice, but uh, I could be mm. talking about Surface. Dell's nice, um, and actually the Dell and the Surface Pro Three are f similarly sized. Right. Um, and I, I still have kind a, of prefer I have a bigger, hard bigger keyboard. Devices, you know. Yeah. 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 Uh, beer pick of the week. Yes. This has the best name ever. It does. Um, so you know, most people in the summer want light summer beers. I do not. I am not one of those people. <laughs> I am not one of those, <laughs> those people. people. Those people are dumb. I want chocolatey porters. <laughs> I do. So I, yes. So this week I had a beer from Central Waters Brewing, which is in Wisconsin. And this beer is called the Central Waters Peruvian Morning Stout. <laughs> so what's great yes. about this beer? It's a bourbon barrel beer. Let's start with that. Aged in bourbon barrels. It also has coffee in it. Mm -hmm. the uh, morning name. So if you think about it, even though it's been like in the 90s here this week, think of this as an iced coffee bourbon barrel delight. <laughs> or serve it hot. <laughs> wow. And it, think of it as a hot toddy. <laughs> it, it's really good. Um, and, and the best part to me is it's only about 8%, which if you know bourbon barrel beers, they tend to be very high in alcohol. This is something you could at least have one and still be okay. It's like a, like about a two peppermint three. patty commercial, you know. <laughs> when I butt into I a think, peppermint yeah. patty. You would love this one, Paul. I think you would. I've been drinking um, a lot of French spirits this week, and I got to tell you. Do you no. like them? No, they're light. <laughs> they're really light, aren't they? I shouldn't. There's, there's, a craft, there's actually a craft beer thing happening in France, but it's, um, you know, it's French. <laughs> so uh, the Belgian beers are, are Belgians good. Belgians are so and good, and they're just those. over the border. Um, Germany's just over the yep. border. <laughs> if you look at my untapped profile, you'll see a bunch of crazy-looking Bel Belgian things. But, yeah, the French stuff is, you know... I, I, they don't I really associate effort, but... French and beer. They don't seem to... Should right. I be concerned that on the uh, profile for this Peruvian morning, <laughs> it says, uh, oh, yeah. recalled due to mentioned. infection, recalled at least yep. in part due to infection, relief... Rec that is They've had awesome. some trouble over the last few years. They have, no, no, but no, you know what... Leo, the new one's fine. The new one's fine. The new one is fine. I drank it. I'm still here. And um, the that's versions good. that are not that have not been recalled are the ones that have been on tap, and that's how so I had it. The cans or bottles were recalled. The bottles they've been having problems with, and I don't know if they've gotten that under control. But it, what, it what seems it like uh, what is, I, I think what yeah. From what I read, it, it was salmonella. Sour. No, people were saying it tasted sour. Oh, okay. It's not gonna. Um, it's not gonna make you sick. I don't think it's, it's going to make taste you sick. Bad. Real no, uh, I don't think. Wow. Yeah, but the one I had, I can tell you, was delightful. Was this that you had this rattle? Did you? Of course, she I did. did. Yeah, <laughs> of course she did. Yeah. You are. Um, you live in. You live in heaven. Rattle has it on <laughs> tap. That's what blows me. They away. do. They know. They do. Rattle's amazing. How many taps do they have? Uh, Forty taps. Jeez. Yeah. And they change it a lot. You know, I, I don't. I, you know. By the way, so. Uh, the week before Windows 10 launched, Mary Jo was in um, Florida for the, okay. the partner conference. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I was in New York for a Microsoft briefing. And so we, I had the weird circumstance of going to <laughs> Rattle and Hub without Mary Jo. Oh, boy. <laughs> and so uh, there were some, Brad Sams was there and some other people were there. And we were kind of hanging out. And I grabbed one of the waitresses and I said, hey, um, you know, you may remember we're friends of Mary Jo. And she said, yeah. And I said, um, Mary Jo is in Florida and um, I would like to have her mug. <laughs> and uh, she said, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> so we got a. <laughs> so we kind of. Who was this? You know, we had like a, we had a, we had a hostage situation going. They're there renting out your mug, Mary Jo. We, we sent we like sent photos mug. to Mary Jo on Twitter and said, oh. "If you ever want to see your mug alive." You know. Yeah, they tried ransomware with my mug. I think you should. They were very. That they were very affection. That doesn't sound good. They at were all. just very accommodating. You know, I, <laughs> there was no. 
There was no question about this request. Like the, <laughs> you seem like a nice guy. Yeah. Have her mug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to work on that those servers <laughs> over there. sure yep. have her mug <laughs> well we didn't do anything terrible to it no as as of course not <laughs> Paul Therata Mary Jo Foley you could see they're friends <laughs> off air as well as on and they are the hosts of Windows Weekly Paul's at therot.com T-H-U-R-R-O-T dot com and don't forget the field guides. The Windows 10 field guide will be out next week. It is, what is the website? Fieldguidebooks.com. Yeah. Dot com. Mary Jo Foley's at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's her uh, ZDNet blog where she covers Microsoft obsessively. And you'll find. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find them both. What? Compulsively. <laughs> Compulsively. You'll find them both. Uh, here every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. If you can't be here live, you can always watch After the Fact on-demand versions available everywhere, including that fine Groove app. Do they have podcasts in Groove? No. Oh, never mind. No. So on, Win on Windows Phone only, there's Microsoft has a podcast app right. that's separate from Groove Music. You know what? If you're but on you a desktop, just go to twit.tv slash www. It's there. Uh, yeah, I, geez, I hope I would like to see them put that app on Windows. Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah. yeah. Are there yeah. any? There must be podcast apps in the Windows. There, there absolutely are. Yeah. Of course yeah. there are. Yeah. We'll find out what the best one is. Actually, the best ones are all labeled Twit on every platform, <laughs> including Windows and Roku. Thanks to our uh, wonderful third-party developers. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. We'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. <laughs>